queen e8 check. And then if the king Queenie. moves. And then king g7, d7, right? d7. Yeah. Well, king queen wow. g8 was played instead, and then king h5. Queen g8, king h5. Queen e8 check now. Yeah, if king g4, h3 is mate. This is over. Nice. White wins. This yeah, is that's over. Right. Azarov did it for the marshals here. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Armenia played Moscow. That's why they suddenly got two points. Isn't that made in one? And then we have H3 made. That's a beautiful checkmate on the board. Oh my goodness, Azarov. I think this guy's got a lot of... Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first Battle Royale of the week. I am International Master David Proust, happy to be joined here by Women's Grandmaster Jen Shahadi. Hello, David. Hey, Jen. So, you've done several rounds of this, but this is your first Battle Royale, right? Oh, yeah, I'm really excited. I, I, when I heard about the Battle Royales this year, I couldn't wait to call one, so glad to be with you. Yeah, me too. I had so much fun doing the Battle Royale. I was... Um, I was waiting for another one. <laughs> so here we are. Um, you want to tell people what the how the format's different from other weeks here? Well, yeah. I mean, the Battle Royale is very exciting because we are going to see the top boards play each other. Um, each top board from every team will play each other. So it's a round-robin format, and it lasts about three and a half hours. And basically, people are both trying to get points, for their team as the top team gets 24 points of, as a bonus and you add the bonus points to your overall score so it's kind of like a, a merge of individual scoring and team scoring which i think is really exciting yeah cool um so also we're going to have a slightly sped up time control of 10 minutes instead of 15 um is there any team that you think is going to be favored by things going even faster than normal? God, you know, I mean, I was looking at the how tight these lineups are, and yeah. I really, it's hard to pick a team. I, I did enter Fantasy Chess, and by the way, I want to remind everyone there were a little bit of bugs on Fantasy Chess for a brief period last night. So if you had trouble entering, you still have about 15 minutes to enter. You have 10 minutes after the start of the round, which is 8 a.m., so get in there, 8 a.m. PT. So get in there and pick your fantasy team. I mean, the, the, right now, if you look at the teams, we have the New York Marshals who haven't lost 
a match yet. And yeah. I also think another favored team is the Armenia Eagles. Right. Because they're doing so well in the regular competition. But the lineups are really strong today. I mean, yeah. who would you pick as the favorite to win? I'm pretty sure that the Armenia Eagles um, won a battle royale the first the first time around. I think they came first in theirs, maybe. Um, well, I say pretty sure. I'm not totally sure. But I, th I think they did. Um, who I had to pick in fantasy who I thought was favored to win. And I picked the Marshalls, I think. Well, it, when you do it in fantasy, for those of you who haven't filled out your, your score yet, I feel that you're supposed to pick the team that you have a lot of boards that you pick for, right? Because that's consistent. Yeah. If you're going to win the 10K prize, then obviously if you picked, um, you know, a player that is a lot of players on one team, then you also want to pick them as the team that wins it all, right? Yes, so, I agree. I picked two of the Marshalls players as well. So that's a very pick? that's a very important tip for anyone who wants your brother's money um, to make sure that you pick something that's like consistent. Don't pick three players from the Archbishops and then pick Webster to win the Battle Royale because that it's not going to happen at the same time. I picked their third and fourth boards. I picked Jurabek, real boy, and I picked um, Grant Chu, who has a super high performance so far. I picked Grant Jew as well. Yeah. And I picked uh, Jurevac. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, it sounds like our fantasy team's live. We're going to have a tight match when it comes yeah. to the fantasy today. Well, at least you and I are going to be in agreement. So we can we can thrill together and cry together, <laughs> depending how hey, it who goes. Who did you pick for board one? For board one and two, um, I picked, let's see, I picked two players from the same team. So I hesitated between those two teams. I picked Vashiela Grav and Fresine. From the mid. Okay, I picked Fresene and Andraken. So, okay. yeah, I wanted to mix it up. Yeah. You know. So I hesitated between those between those two teams for my between, for my pick. Between Andraken and Maxime yeah. Bashir the Grav. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, I thought that the migraines board three and four hadn't performed well in previous matches. Um. So I think for them to win the whole battle royale, they need either two players to step up or they need Fresine and, and MVL to score like seven points. <laughs> so um, so I thought that overall the Marshals had the better chance of having a decent score on every single board. Here. And it looks like we're going to get started any minute now. Um, I'm going to be yep. keeping an eye on the Twitch chat. So if you have any questions or comments, uh, do post them there. Let us know if you think that our fantasy picks are all terrible. <laughs> yeah, I mean, who did you guys pick? And if you haven't picked, nine minutes to go. Nine yeah, minutes to go if you haven't I picked. I was the last one to enter, which I feel like should have oh. its own special prize. It no, should. Not really. You have to no. be like watching the clock and like slip in at the last moment there. Yeah, I got it with like 20 seconds to spare. I think it's yeah. funny that you can actually enter with the uh, knowing the openings of the first round and like knowing, especially in this, this format, it might be a slight advantage to enter at the end because maybe you can get like some small sense of how things are going to go. I mean, oh, it's true. I don't if, think it's, if you're yeah. waiting to like see the first like couple games. Well, you can't really see the first couple of games. You can literally only see half of the first game, right? Right. No, I meant like the first games for, you know, six different players or whatever. Like, yeah, you're yeah, waiting to yeah. see how like MVL's first game goes and how like Andraken's first game goes. If they're paired in the first round, it would be really useful information. <laughs> so it looks like we're just about to get started. Yeah. Uh, we did get a question from Bobby79 um, asking about what a Battle Royale is. Yeah. So Good Battle question. Royale is a really exciting um, addition of week, basically, format of the Pro Chess League. So instead of our regular matches, we have a round robin between all the board ones and all the board twos and threes and fours. And I think it's really exciting because we're both trying to get – um, as many points as possible. And we're also trying to get as many points as possible for our team. Yeah. Um, the other and team there's that more, I... There's more points at stake in Battle Royale than there is in a regular match, right? So, like, you can really get 
you can really shake up the standings. Like you can get uh, a big boost, or you could get dragged down. Right, David. That's right. I mean, if you if you if you scored, let's say, nineteen points out of mm -hmm. twenty eight, that's a pretty good score. I mean, you could potentially win with eighteen, eighteen and a half. But let's say you score nineteen and you get the twenty four first point, uh, first place bonus points. That's forty three points. Whereas in a normal match, you would expect to get twenty. So the teams in like first and second in a battle royale can really leapfrog somebody. Yeah, and that's really important for a lot of teams um, as we see that the Armenia Eagles are pretty comfortable, as are the New York Marshals, um, in the standings right now. Yeah. But a lot of teams could really use that boost, including like the Marseille Migraines, exactly. the Stormbringers, where the the Stormbringers, where they've got incredible lineups, but right now they're not in playoff position. Yeah. Um, but just today could change that all. If yeah. One of these were to get, you know, the uh, the twenty four points that you refer to, plus of course needing about eighteen to nineteen points. That seems like about the magic number. Um, they could leapfrog up to like number two pretty easily, right, David? Yeah. The Stormbringers and Migraines, very good examples. Both not in the playoff picture. Both won good matches last week, but it didn't actually change the standings. You know, like just like they nudged their way a little bit closer. But uh, this could really this could really turn their season around if they if they finished at the top today. The other team that's a really big question today is Barcelona Raptors. They've brought in like two players who are new in Vallejo Pons and Ponomaryov. So they brought in two new, like massive big guns out of nowhere. Their previous lineups this season were usually like 25, 25, 24, 24, like super balanced lineups. Um, and now suddenly they're playing like two 2,700 players. So it's a totally different look for the Raptors. And, you know, they're playing like three players who've never played before this season. Um, yeah, that's extremely exciting. I was I, I was enthusiastic about that when I found out. I mean, obviously tonight's um, battle royale is going to be really exciting as well because mm -hmm. you've got all of like the top dogs, Fabi and Naka. But right. I was really excited to see some new blood coming in. Um, yeah. yeah, the Barcelona Raptors absolutely uh, they could get themselves into a more comfortable position. And another team which I really feel like there's a lot at stake for today is the Sopranos. They've got mm -hmm. uh, 96 points, so they're a distant fourth right now in the Atlantic Division, but that's a very competitive division with the Montreal Chess Pros certainly wanting to leapfrog them. Yeah, uh, I feel like they're going to want to have a good result and be a little bit more comfortable in the Atlantic Division. I think they lost somewhat badly to the Archbishops last week. And yes, so, I saw that. So if we're talking about teams that are trying to leapfrog into the playoffs— then the Sopranos in fourth place after a loss are one of those teams that would be like teetering and would be like, hey, like we don't want people to just start leapfrogging us. Yes, yes. They're going to want to, people are going to be out to, to get them, I would say. I agree because it does seem like, you know, somebody like the, the Chess Bras um, needs to do really well in their battle royale. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of going to be like a, Sopranos versus uh, Chess Bras, I think, for that fourth spot, potentially. It looks like that's the way it's shaping up. Okay. And that's a really coveted spot, for sure. Because yeah. it's, it's obviously the, it's the, a very tough division. And, you know, with this unknown Raptors team, I considered both of their players for my fantasy team, both of their new their new top guns, um, Vallejo, Pons, and Ponomaryov. Um, but there wasn't like a track record, right? Like with some of these guys, you've got a track record. Vashay Lagrav plays like every single match. You've got, you've got a very clear idea, not just that he's a 2780 rated player, but that he's performed at a certain level match after match. Um, with these guys, I went back in time and I found a couple matches Punamariev played two years ago for the Dublin Desperados in the first season of the pro chess league and he had a fantastic play fantastic performance um so so i really considered him as a potential um fantasy pick and i consider the raptors to be a team that could do really well today i just wasn't sure about their fourth board who's like a 16 year old rated 2080 who almost never plays or recently just doesn't have much fide history <clears throat> yeah, well, I'm really excited for sure to see that. And I want to give a shout out to everybody in the chat. Um, Greg Shahadi, the commissioner, says that we're going to start in just a few minutes. 
Lady Macbeth uh, gives me a shout out saying that <laughs> I'm working overtime with a PCL today and the champions showdown tomorrow. And she thanks, calls me a commentating queen. Well, thank you, Lady Macbeth. Of course, uh, nice. we've got the, so many incredible commentators here uh, as I'm really excited to um, host this show. Do you ever get uh, tired, Jen? Do you ever get tired if you have to like commentate back to back to back to back? Does it ever? Oh, yeah, tire? absolutely. Yeah. I know you're you're going back to back today. I, I'm, I'm doing two. Doing, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. I do get tired, but I feel like when it's something new and exciting like this, it makes it a lot easier. So mm -hmm. it's it's like the, the fact that it was a battle royale made it even easier for me to say yes, even though I knew this was going to be a really busy week okay. with the, uh, the Karen's Cup having just concluded and the uh, champion showdown starting tomorrow. And I love the scheduling because we just had the opening dinner for the champion showdown last night. And of course, Nakamura was there. Fabiano Caruana was there. Wesley So was there. Uh -huh. And the competition doesn't start till Wednesday, but this is perfect because it means that tomorrow night, I mean, tonight, of course, they're going to have a chance to play in the Pro Chess League in the Battle Royale. Right. So, they kind of like moved around the opening dinner to make sure that they could play in it, which I think is really cool. Uh huh. So yeah, so they, I mean, H Hikaru for sure has been playing his matches from all over this season. I've definitely noticed that, you know, him playing from Gibraltar at four in the morning. Now he's playing from the Champions Showdown. Um, these guys, well, at least Hikaru for sure, but Wesley So, a couple of these guys seem to play very well no matter where they're playing from. Like it doesn't seem to bother them at all to be traveling to be playing in other tournaments during the day or the next morning so yeah i i am i am hearing we might have a small delay so keep those questions mm -hmm. coming uh i i see that cash menke asked me does anyone know what a karen is is that a question for us or is that a question for the chat i think it's supposed to be a pile of rocks this like did a, come up in in the broadcast it's like a question for dictionary.com or google but I guess yeah. he's asking people to really think think it think it themselves, huh? Well, Tissive actually got the, got it right before I even said it on the screen. So yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Lady Macbeth says it's brilliant to see Tapala back in action. Indeed, he's going to be playing against Dominguez in the Champions Showdown. The last time that we saw Tapala in action may have been a match against Kasparov, also in one of these St. Louis special matches. Oh, right, like the Chess 960 thing? Yeah. Yeah, which was really fun. Anytime there's 960... I'm watching. <laughs> oh, are you? You're a big fan. Oh, big fan. <laughs> big fan. I mean, so, pro, chess, pro Chess League is good and all, but honestly, if we played 960 instead of chess, that's kind of what I'm waiting for. Oh, really? I didn't know you were such a fan. I, yeah. I, I love it, too. I think it's really exciting. Um, yeah. It was. It's it's pretty amazing to do Chess 960 commentary, especially with Yasser. Yeah. he's He was into it also, right? Well, the other thing is Yasser is such a great strategist that he can kind of like really quickly understand how the pieces harmonize. Mm -hmm. And therefore, 960 is like perfect for him because you see this kind of scattered configuration of chess pieces. And he's like, well, the bishop needs to, you know, go to like C2 and then the knight. It's just really like amazing how quickly he's able to see these configurations. I mean, obviously, it's not always going to be the best one. Right. Not every time. There's, there's going to be tactical details. You're not going to see everything instantly, but... Yeah, and I, I want to give a shout out to MBL. Maxime Vachier Legrave is going to be playing today for the Migraines, as we mentioned earlier. Good fantasy yeah. pick. And yeah. there will be an extension to click and follow him if you also want to see him streaming. Also, somebody was asking about Alexandra Botez in the chat, and she's going to be doing the evening stream along with Grandmaster Robert Hess. So, nice. well, I'm so nice. much chess for you to follow today. So many different streams. I know you're yeah. going to be streaming as well, David, tonight. Um, and yep. I also know that Hikaru Nakamura is going to be streaming. So for anybody, really for anybody who's more interested in the San Francisco mechanics than in like you know Wesley So and Fabiano Caruana, I will be streaming <laughs> tonight. Ooh, baby, we got it, we got it started. We got liftoff. Uh, yep, big one. Yep. Francisco Vallejo Pons is playing against Andraken with the white pieces as we yeah. get our battle royale underway. Yeah, my follow command sure picked the right the right game to follow. It just pop this one up first out of all of them and uh this is this is one we want to see we want to see what kind of form Vallejo Pons will be in I don't think he's ever played in the pro chess league before um and then Andraken who is Jen's fantasy pick one of the 
one of the top two or three rated players in this um, battle royale today. So yeah, I was kind of torn because I also was excited to see Francisco um, playing. I, I'm a fan. I like I like Vallejo. I always have. Mm-hmm. Um, but because it's his first time, yeah, I, I went I went towards Ed Drake in. Mm-hmm. Um, we also have Panamaria uh, entering the fray for the Barcelona Raptors. So it's just like a really tough lineup they are bringing yep. in tonight. So today. far, it's on Drake and showing the rust, right? I mean, just hesitating on this first move, like thinking in the tank on something which should just be <laughs> automatic. Um, yeah, so I Vallejo well, Pons I D4 is kind of hard. Let's go to a game where we got some moves, David. All right. I want to take a look at... The, <laughs> and as soon as you say you're going to go away on Drake and moves to, okay. <laughs> to keep your attention. No, who do you want to see? Sorry. Do you want to see MVL or Ponomaryev? Um Well, we yeah... Um, sure, sure. Let's let's take a look at uh, Panamaria. Okay. And then we'll move over to MVL. As yeah. you mentioned earlier, he's also streaming. So we've got the uh, double Fianchetto c- sort of Catalan from white. And Panamaria has a Fianchetto and an open diagonal for the C8 bishop. In my experience, it's hard to get an advantage for white out of this opening. As in, I've only played it two or three times, and I didn't get any advantage. And let's head over to um, MBL's game, as you mentioned, okay. David. Yeah, because that one, playing. I was seeing they're playing. playing some really fast stuff here. Um, you already can't tell what opening it came from, necessarily, but but we were watching, and we know it was a Rui Lopez. An old Rui Lopez. Um how do you like this position so far, Jen? In the uh, in the MVL Andresian game, mm-hmm. um, God, it looks it looks promising to me for White. How about you? Yeah, I also like White. Um, I suppose one thing Black has is the bishop pair. Uh, to his credit, but somehow it seems like. White's mobilization is a little bit faster or better. Despite the knight on a3, white's already got the rook on e1, queen on d2. That just means the white rooks are getting into things a little bit faster. So there's like a threat of f3 already probably winning something if it were white's move again, which it's not. But um, yeah, I think white's managing to get the rooks and queen into play so quickly is uh, is a good sign for, for white. Yeah, I mean, three is certainly a very annoying threat, David. I, I like because even a move like rookie eight doesn't really help that much, right? You still play f three, and even though you're not winning a piece, it's like you, you don't really want to go into the line bishop f five, knight takes f five, and you know fracture your entire king position, right? Yeah, you are right. That looks um, that looks atrocious, and you know white could play rookie two and rook a one, and you're still like just struggling to survive on that thing. So. We could expect a think here out of Zaven, right? As he tries to figure out how he wants to deal with F3. I don't know what to do, David. I don't see a good move. I'm like, at first I was like, oh, this looks like White's doing well. And then I was like, wait a second. What does Black do? So now you think it's like more than well. Now you think it's more than well. Yeah, I guess so. Um, People might have been wondering about F6, but then there was Knight to E6 probably um, hurting Black significantly. So that move was out. Um, then you've got the possibility of h6 sometimes to break the pin, but here white just takes it because of that queen being out. So this position is actually, you know, you might think it's all, so your instinct in evaluating this might be, let's look at the IQP who controls the square in front of it and stuff. But here it's actually, there's some very concrete stuff around white's early lead in development with the rook and queen. So f3 and Andreasian plays f6, trying to, trying to fight back. Looks like it might cost him a pawn. Yeah, just bishop takes f6 quickly played by MVL with the uh, nice little zwish and zug. And now oh. uh, after pawn takes e4, we're going to be up a pawn. And on top of that, your king position is also weakened by um, losing that f7 pawn, right? Yeah. So it's kind of like a pawn plus. Well, White's also played f3 and fe4. So whose king position is more of a problem probably depend on whose pieces end up being active right yeah maybe i see what you're saying i guess i was just thinking it was so easy to play like king h1 whereas you know you you had black has an even harder time the g pawn too yeah exactly Mm -hmm. yeah you're right on that the every extra pawn you move it it gets a little bit worse for the king side 
But honestly, given how bad Black's position was looking, this feels like one of those situations where a GM is happy to like shed a pawn and, and get all their pieces out and and then try and just draw it through sheer grit. I mean, yeah, Zabin's got everything out right now. I almost wondered if after F6, MVL could have played FE4, pawn takes G5, and then pawn to E5. But maybe that E pawn wouldn't have survived. Let's move to another game. How yeah. about uh, Luke Van Wheelie versus Sam Sevian? Okay. As we, as we see the, uh, the Mosquitoes face Whoa. off against the Sopranos. As I mentioned earlier, um, such a such a key matchup for the Sopranos as they're yeah. looking to get a little bit more comfortable. Uh, meanwhile, the Mosquitoes, very similar situation, David, as they're um, number four in the Central Division, but by the thinnest of margins, one and a half points, basically nothing, right? Basically nothing. So they're, they're certainly looking to get lots of points today as well. Yeah. And Sevian has been playing these kind of Queen's Gambit positions several times in the PCL um, in past weeks. I've seen some of his games because he's done so well that one has to look at his games. Um and uh, he won a game against Mamed Yarov in this opening. So he looks pretty comfortable to me at this point, I think. Coming out of this opening is black. He's attacking that C pawn, also trying to organize his pieces. Are you saying you actually like black? I, I, I think he's comfortable. I think he's okay. Sam Sevian, I think, is going to have a pretty, um, pretty exciting, uh, exciting year. As uh, I believe he might be one of the players for the World Team Championship. I'm not sure exactly what the the lineups are, but that's going to be taking place soon in Astana in Kazakhstan. Okay. So definitely something to watch out for as well. Yeah. Let's check back in on Vallejo because that game's actually gotten really exciting, David. That uh, that top dog matchup between Andraken and and Vallejo Pons. Right. Wow. So he's in check, but he's not just taking it. So he's considering moving his king and recapturing on f4 with the pawn. It's kind of a locked position where the black rook on a7 had to defend the b pawn. He'd much rather have that. Rook ready for his kingside attack because it looks like Andraken really wants a kingside attack here. And he did actually play knight takes h3, queen takes h3, quick rook f2, looking to defend against some ideas like, uh, well, I mean, it's not like bishop takes g3 was really on tap, but. No. It's almost uh, more on tap now because the bishop on e1's blocked. Yeah, so I'm trying to understand what rook. Oh, he just wants to play bishop f1. So that's why he played rook f2. Just yeah. more less to defend laterally because it was already well defended and more just to kick the queen out with bishop mm -hmm. f1. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I think, I mean, like, his dream move would be to play e4 at some point. And to ever play e4, he probably needs his bishop controlling that square. So maybe he's headed to g2, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, like, this this kind of locked position is always a little bit hard to wrap your wrap your brain around because, I mean, to me, e4 seems hard to organize. I guess for black, I'm thinking about what I can do. Can I get like g5 f4 in, or is that just going to be suicidal? Yeah, he goes for bishop takes g3, Jen. There we go. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, you mentioned it. Now if takes on g3, there's a uh, queen g3. I can't play rook g2 because the queen takes e1. Right. Um, and so. I think I I'd already figured out king f1 while we were talking about other things. Mm -hmm. So I think king f1, there's queen h3 check. King g1, queen g3 would, would repeat. And if rook g2, then you can play queen h1, rook g1, queen h3. And if the king comes up to f2, black will always have knight e4 check. So, oh, God, just, that's a lot of analysis. You I, should take us through some of that. But I'll wait, just show people what, what about... I'm thinking about. If white yeah, tries yeah. to avoid the perpetual, then knight e4 and white gets bonked. Exactly. That's a really nice line. Sweet. So if white wants to avoid the draw, I think they basically have to go to h1. Um, and that I haven't yet calculated. So, well, king h1. Yeah. Now, now we're looking at things like knight e4 and rook f6. Yeah. 
Uh, it, it looks really bad. I think he's gonna maybe play King F1 and yeah. try to go for that perpetual. I mean, he's because... got he's got that rook on C2, sneakily defending him as well. So there is the potential to maybe go for this kind of a line. Yeah, that's but we'll true. See. Yeah, King F1. Okay, that line was risky. They've repeated once, and now pawns could roll the dice on h1 or i mean by roll the dice you know he's 2700 he can calculate it <laughs> make an informed decision yeah but it's not like there was, we, there were other moves be besides 94 also of course yeah so. yeah. yeah but I, I somehow i feel like so yeah king h1 versus king f1 really big decision here do you go for the the draw by perpetual or do you try to do you calculate that king h1 is winning yeah Big choice here. What would you guys do? As Annie, so Tyrex says, draw. And yeah. Of course, people can. I see people are guessing on the chess.com. Easy to Live. say it's a draw, but if we throw you guys into the into the booth, if we throw you into the seat, what would you guys go for? Go for H1 the win. Or says Halberdoff. Go for the win, and uh, Stevie says, "Why haven't New York and Moscow's game started yet?" We'll 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 keep we'll keep you posted on that as soon as we get more information. Yeah. We've got the New York Marshals in chat checking about the games, so we'll see. Yeah, New York Marshals also asking. Uh, it does look like we saw King F1 again and King G1, so maybe we should move to another game as it looks this the game is likely yep. to get to get drawn. I don't see King H1 happening. There it is. There it I is. call it as the game has been drawn. It may not be as exciting off. as seeing a live checkmate, but we've seen a live result. Um, if we pop over to Froljana versus Ponomaria for a second, Froljana has sacrificed a pawn, and I'm curious what you think of this pawn sack, because it's not like an obvious attacking pawn sack. Yeah, I mean, there's we've got a really nice bishop on a3. Uh, we've got the c5 square, which I think is huge. But is it enough for a whole pawn? Hmm. Don't know about that. What about? But I guess we, we just have to look at it concretely. What's your plan after knight c5? Probably bishop to c8. I don't know. Sometimes right. I get over, sometimes I get overly passive when I'm up a pawn. So instead, he, play, he plays a move h4. I actually like that better than knight c5 because Me I think too. your bishop c8 move was a good reply. And then it's kind of like okay. I can paint a picture of my dino on c5, but it's not doing anything because okay. it has no targets. Yeah. This h4 move opens up the possibility of playing knight g5, which could be more dangerous. Although even there, I, I'm struggling to figure out how to make use of, like for instance, the a2 g8 diagonal. Right. Yeah, I mean, I guess the overall problem for white is your pieces are already pretty active, right? Your minor pieces are, in theory, well-placed, but the black structure right now has no point for you to attack it. So the idea of, like, h4, h5 is to try and create some kind of weakness or target, start to break up this black structure, which, as you say, the c6 pawn is killing our bishop, you know, the g6 pawn was killing our queen on c2 from attacking the king side. And once we've generated some kind of weakness somewhere, then we can know where to reposition our pieces. Otherwise, knight c5, knight e4, knight g5, we're just moving around in circles. We do have a few more moves in the game as after the move h4, bishop f5, queen b3, knight f6 played. As white is trying to kind of use the b3 square to a potentially at some point play knight c5 and pressure the b7 pawn actually happened live. It's also possible that at some point in the future the queen will be of use on that diagonal. But b yeah. 6 quickly played, and yeah. now what, what's the follow-up? Well, this move is very awkward for white because now that knight is trapped. <laughs> so e4 is, is forced, basically. Got to do something I messy, yep. I was trying to see if you could play knight a6 to any good effect, but I think queen a7 would have just done the job. Yeah, I think so you're right there. So e4, instead, e4 played... Um, so yeah. now white's going to go down potentially two pawns, right? But the pawns will be certainly very fractured, and I guess we'll be able to recapture on c5. Mm -hmm. So All bishop right. c8 played because the he didn't tension, really like that line. The tension continues. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, this game is certainly exciting now because we, 
Black Canal also has to watch out for E5 and E6 ideas coming up with the knight coming to F4. Yeah, I I mean, I'd be I'd be kind of wanting to play C5 for Black because it's good against the bishop A3 and knight D3, and I'm kind of worried about white playing C5 and opening his rook. But... Pawn to C5, but the thing about pawn C5 is... Yeah, I see that. I see what you're trying to say. I'm, I'm just it's concerned. basically just that I'm worried about White doing it, which I guess is a good sign for how Froliano's playing this position if he's got ideas that are making me uncomfortable. Yeah, I find this really, right. I find this game really exciting, actually. And right. It looks like C5, Knight F4 was played. Yeah. So we're guessing all the moves. And the move E6, because, of course, the weakness of C5 is that it really uh, makes the square D5 look like a great potential spot. So E6 played. Yep. But now rook b1, yep. putting pressure on the on the pawn, and you can't really play rook d6 because e5 would have been good. So that's why knight d7. Yep. Knight d7 was the only way, and then it gives white the chance to play h5 and poke at something. So I was kind of playing guess the move with arrows there for a couple moves. But um, you know, I think both players are playing playing quite well. I'm impressed with how much Foliano is able to come up with in a position where it looked like, yeah, you're up, you're yeah, your pieces are active, but what are you going to do with them, right? And now he's made black play e6, so now he aims towards the dark squares, right? He's also got the h pawn. But, so bishop ooh, b2, bishop, bishop d4, d4 played. Hmm, That's nice. Know. He's not going to just seed that diagonal. No bishop b2, queen b2. And you're not remotely worried about the pawn getting to h6 because it's so hard for us queen to get into the game. Well, what is Froljanov going to do if Pono plays e5 now? Um, what is he going to do if Black plays e5? I don't know. He might start trying to do stuff like bishop h3. No, the pawn on e4 is currently hanging, so oh, we have to probably, start. He'll probably go knight c3, actually. Um, he'll go knight c3 and see if Black's worried about knight d5. And if Black yeah, takes like on that. c3, then he's got the dark squared bishop to sort of roam free again. I just want to get my queen over to the king side at some point, David. So yeah, that, now like, you do. At least, you're, at least you're like slightly worried about stuff like h6 in the future. Uh huh. But I, I like knight c3 also. I'm like I'm trying to get like queen f3 and knight c3 in. Bishop c1, none of the above. None of the but above. Another, way to, another kind of way to take advantage of the dark squares and kind of suggest that the bishop on d4 is pretty as it might look may not be that great right he's trying to say i'm gonna play around the bishop on d4 i mean i've seen people play around like a knight outpost on b3 or b6 that's a pretty typical way to deal with with that kind of a, a weak square but a piece on d4 or d5 i don't know if i've ever seen anyone successfully play around a piece like that well here i kind of like it because the one thing you don't want when you're trying to create compensation for a pawn like whether you got it or not you certainly won't want to do a lot of trades right something that we learned very early but look at this move bishop f3 the creativity continues and he's planning to play king g2 and rook h1 and yeah. open up another avenue against the d7 king yeah i love it but rook, look f8. At this move. rook f8 he's thinking about f5 he's thinking about making the king on g2 a, a problem not letting white just settle down and and attack I have to think for all white's creativity, it mu it might still favor black this this game. This game is just so interesting. Um, in the background, MVL has won against Zaven, and I'm going to click over to another game for a second just to see how Van Welly and Sevian are doing. Yeah, let's take a look at that. Although I really do like the Frelly Lab game; it's very exciting. Yeah, I think we stumbled on one of the most exciting games possible. It looks like um, Sevian's doing great i think the knight's better than the bishop here not if the queens get traded though <laughs> yeah it does seem like black is a little bit better for some reason but maybe that's just a visual because of like the, the knight looking so nice on f3 this queen e2 move mm -hmm. could nip things in the bud yeah i think the well, knight looks good and is good so i i, I think that that we're right to kind of like black's position here but benwell has got an extra minute versus you know this one versus like 50 seconds so that's a little little something to help him out here and everyone's going to be wondering about these four points for the new york marshals here um well we do have some news on that did you read no why don't you why don't you tell us the news yeah um it looks like the moscow phoenix um have not shown up and will be forfeited for every round Ooh. so the marshals don't really have a lead they've got the same four points everyone's going to get 
I think that's good, though. At least that makes it uh, more fair. I think that if uh, somebody, you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. if one person were to get the forfeit and others weren't, that would make it almost worse. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's unfortunate. And we will let you guys know if we get any more information on that and if anything changes. But for those of you who picked oh. um, Moscow players on your fantasy team, sorry. Yeah, well. You're in the situation that I was in last week when I picked Nepo Miachi in his like debut. I was like, Nepo, he's good at rapid chess. I know I've seen this guy play the World Rapid Championships, and then he subbed out. Unfortunately, Froliev um, just lost. We we were watching him fight hard, but yeah. Panamariev was able to consolidate an extra couple pawns, and um, he actually resigned in a position soon after we left it. So. Well played uh, yeah. by Panamaria by staying active. I like that move, Rook F8 and F5. How many of you would have gone for that? You know, you're you're up you're up upon your opponent starting to attack you, and you attack them. Yeah, and I showed everybody the moves here just to see how it happened. That pawn on H5 that was supposed to tickle Black ended up just being the second pawn to die. Um, when Black opened up the F file with threats. And, well played uh, game. Very yeah. well played by Panamariev. I, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty excited to, to continue to see his games. He this handled is, everything there nicely. Let's look over Raven Sturt's game um, okay. for the Sopranos against the Liam um, Roliak of the Mosquitoes because wow. we're in time pressure, baby. That queen is annoying. Roliak has the extra minute, so it's really only the severe time pressure for Raven. Um, That's true. He's going to be... He's going to be pretty worried here, I think, facing this you're, extra you're two pawns. He's just totally lost because there's the the extra the extra two pawns I and think, the extra minute. I think two pawns in the time is basically like black black doesn't have much of a chance. <laughs> okay, let's go over to another one then. Let's go yeah. over to Rigoli of the migraines versus um, Anna Sarsian of the okay. Armenian Eagles because this one's yeah. actually really exciting. Whoa! Uh, both of them have no time. Yeah. And uh, Sarsdian of uh, the Eagles is up in exchange, but look at that H pawn. Yeah, I don't know what's going on at all. In my in my experience, these positions are often decided by the A and H pawns. As we say that, both players aim for checkmate. Um, <laughs> Ooh, Rook D eight, threatening Queen H eight, mate. Is there any good response to this, David? I don't think so. The king's oh, running. She could have he she could have tried to cut the king off with Queen F six, but instead she went for the chasing approach. So the king's out in the open now. Too late to analyze it now. Oh, now God. the king's escaped. Now the king's escaped, right? He'll hide behind the white pawns. You'll never checkmate that king now. And oh, the no. king will support the H pawn. So this went very bad. Um, it did. It did. It Black, like could, she wasted Black could have traded queens last move. Um, they didn't, but they could have. Now they're doing it. A queen trade is actually fine for Black here because a bishop on yes. E4 is so good with an H pawn and an A pawn. Yes, um, I, I, I think you're right. I mean, look at this H pawn go. It's just it's just a little bit too fast, David. Oh, and as we say that, this pawn is hung. If bishop g2, white can play rook g2, pawn g2, queens, and then after black queens, queen a7 check. Oh, so no, now, something went wrong, but that's why it's good that she has a couple extra pawns, David. Yeah, yeah she's got to use the next one. Had to drop the H pawn there. Queens? I don't... I don't Queens? Okay. Oh no, Rook takes e4. The king needed to never go near the bishop with that e oh, file. Oh no. Oh no. And, and there it goes as Anna starts Anna to wins. A very exciting game. Nice yeah. one. Nice one. Okay, other other time scramble. Two games left. Alexander, Alexander Lenderman against Wouter Spulman. It's black who could win with three pass pawns that white has to be very careful defending. No, I think Black's got to be winning this, right? How can you defend against three pawns? That's too many pawns. I never David. have succeeded at defending against the three pawns. I've tried. <laughs> no way. No <laughs> way, no way. Um, and then the other game. But, um, you know, with 10 seconds, it's within the realm of, like, Black hangs one pawn and you're fine, right? I mean, one thing. Maybe it's more likely that White hangs a knight fork. But if Black makes one mistake, Lenderman can draw it. And here we also have Marisa Bag playing yeah. against... Um, Ga Arthur Gabrielian of Arthur the Gabrielian. Eagles. Arthur Yeah. And it looks, and it like, looks like looks like she's, she's got this one in the bag. Uh, yeah. Past pawns well, on the H file and the A files. And there it is. H file uh, génial. Grandmaster from France, who, by the way, was just at the Karen's Cup here in St. Louis just like two days ago. So yeah. still jet lag, but got the job done. And here she comes... 
excitement here, David. So I'm really, it's kind of nice to see her rebound and do well in the first round of the chest of the protest league. Actually, yeah. she had a cool event, but she was awesome as a person. Oh, look at that. She, she played rook B2 because yeah. it would have been a stalemate if we took it. Yep. But instead, of course, checkmate as those pawns did indeed turn out to be too much. Yeah. So once this pawn got to H3, black set up. I mean, I guess it was smart to bring the knight to g3. Spillman set up this checkmating net with the rook, knight, and pawn. And there was just nothing for Lenderman to do about it. So you were right. There was never really any particular hope there for white. The uh, the knight is just so good on one side of the board, it's almost like you're up three pawns and not down in exchange. It's just... You know. Well, let's take a look at the at what we've got here as, with the standing so far. Are you kidding me that the Mosquitoes 4 owed the Sopranos? Wow, yeah, that that didn't occur to me because we were looking at the game so quickly. But yeah, I guess Lenderman, this game we saw right here, was a loss. But what about that Sevian game? I know, that means Sevian lost that endgame with the knight against Bishop. Yeah, yeah, remember um, we were saying that we liked the... Uh, I think that it was a little bit more visual, though, that that advantage for Black. The knight looked so imposing, but Lo Luke Van Whaley was finding a lot of good moves there. Nice. Um, Jay Brazel says, of course she wins. I didn't put her on my chess PCL fantasy team. <laughs> After considering her, right? You're like, yeah, this is one of okay. the people I should maybe put on my team. <clears throat> yeah, I can confirm that Van Welly won. I found the game. I think I can open it in live analysis. Yeah, Luke Van Welly. Turn off that. Oh, the next round is starting. Nice. Let's go. All By right. the way, it doesn't seem like there was a, there was only one draw, and we actually caught it. Remember the one against Vallejo and Andreiken? <laughs> Every other game decisive, so pretty. Are bloody you kidding? Here. We caught the only draw <laughs> at the Battle Royale. That's why it's called the Battle Royale. <laughs> well, it wasn't and a boring draw. I mean, it was a draw by Bishop Sack and you know Perpetual. It's not the worst. Yeah, I mean, any draw that is a sacrifice followed by perpetual, unless it's open <coughs> preparation, I feel like that doesn't really count as a draw. <laughs> yeah. To me, that's a, to me, that's a different category. All right, let's. Where do we want to start? We can go anywhere you want. Yeah, we can. Um, let's start with MVL since he played such a fast opening last game. Oh yeah. Or is his some... team playing against the against the buy right now? Because I don't see his game. Yeah, yeah, he's not up yet. You want to check in with Vallejo? Let's check in Vallejo um, against yeah, Vallejo Wojcic Moranda. Playing, Vallejo's playing with White, and um, it looks like he's got this end game. Maybe not the best game to pick. Slight edge for White because the king on e7 is, of course, interfering with uh, the rest of our our army. But Wow, king to e7. I have never seen that move before. Yeah, that's weird, isn't it? It almost looks like a mouse slip of king e8, but... <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I wonder if it's a mouse clip because look at this move B three now, coming coming in with the threat of Bishop A three check. It's awkward. I mean, if you would ask yourself what's the reason for King E seven, you would think to play Bishop B six without getting doubled pawns. But yes. my experience in this in these end games is that often Black plays Bishop E six and doesn't care about getting the doubled pawns. Oh no, he's supposed to play right. Bishop to C eight, David. This can't be preparation. It can't be, can it? No. Wait, who's supposed to play okay. bishop c8? Bishop e6. Okay, bishop e6. I thought you were... Yeah. I'm sorry. I thought you were moving the bishop back to c8. And I was like... Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> I was just <laughs> showing what he just did. Um, so, yeah, bishop to e6, I agree. Um, this looks weird, but at the same time, I'm not convinced it was a mouse slip. Because, okay. it, like you said, there is a logical reason right. for playing king 7 right? And he did follow it up with the move that could have been the idea of it. And reasonably quickly. So, yeah. Well, we'll check back in on this, but this isn't going to thrill the fans here at this point. So I think that Azara of Panamaria has got a lot of potential for explosiveness as we, we see a very exciting ex advanced variation of the Carol Khan. Oh, yeah. It's like it's gonna be really explosive with the, an early F6. The F pawn's been moved. Yeah. Panamaria was black last game, right? In that... In that um. And that exciting game that we saw where he played yep. Rook F8 and F5 at some point. Yeah. So, so maybe... we got our first glimpse of the Marshals in action since they had the first round bye. 
um, which the migraines just took to leapfrog into first place in quotes in the uh, standings. But I guess you could just add four points to everybody else's score or subtract four points from the migraines and the marshals to know what the what the real standings are like. I guess um, the question is whether there's an advantage to having that break because the pro chess league action is so fast and furious mm -hmm. that having a break in the middle maybe is better than having it towards the beginning. Yeah, I, I think I think the first round would be the worst time to get it probably. Yeah, because it's also a little bit less uh, – it's a little bit more um, stressful and confusing because you don't know exactly what's going on. But I, I don't know because there's also an argument that people get into kind of a flow state and, like, once they once they get into their groove, they start doing really well. Right. So I think it could go either way. But You as might not want that right break now, to, to ice you. As a, as a position right now – for Panamaria, is he in trouble here? Because B5. my concern is that after this move, B5, we're going to take on E5, we're going to take on D4, and then how does Queen H5 check look? Doesn't that look real dangerous? It looks quite dangerous. Wow, B5. I For a second so, when he played B5, I was thinking, you know, is Black going to consider E4 or something like that? But then there's Bishop takes G7 as well. So I guess that was not at all an option. Um so he moved the knight to d4, let white have queen h5 with check. I guess Ponomaryev is up a pawn this way at least, right? Like That's true. Azarov King didn't f8. have time to both disrupt castling and collect his pawn. So king f8, uh, rook, king f8 obviously castles knight f6, queen quickly came back to e2. Mm -hmm. uh, and now that king on f8 so unfortunately placed is it enough compensation for the pawn i'd say yes because if we really wanted to we could also collect the pawn with like knight d2 knight f3 queen a5 i don't think we're gonna have trouble winning back that pawn if that's our priority yeah i mean if white collected the pawn without anything weird happening in between white would have an advantage so to yeah, me to me black either has to somehow try and play e5 to safeguard the pawn in which case black would be winning if they could somehow safely play e5 or they have to achieve something special while white's taking the pawn queen d6 played um as you mentioned e5 right away we would have just taken it so now e5 is part of the idea there's a lot of ways we could potentially play against this i mean don't forget we could just play the blunt looking f4 I mean, yeah. it's always possible. Another think, thing that always needs to be thought of is move a4, looking to play bishop a3, yeah. um, after which bishop takes c5, queen c5, e5 would be taking. But he chose f4, and yeah. yeah, I don't hate that move because... Both Azarov and I agree with you. Like, f4 seems like you want to stop e5. There may even be situations where you want to play f5 later. It gets you some space. It gets you e5 as an outpost for the knight, possibly. I think... Um, I think, uh, yeah, this was a, a good move. Yeah, yeah. It, it first, you know, normally when I have my king on g1 and there's a bishop on b6, I don't like playing f4, but there's a lot of exceptional things about this position, David. Yeah. It's not your typical position. Uh, what's up next for white? I'm thinking of the idea knight d2, knight f3, and yeah. that's going to be really scary. So blacks, yeah. I don't know. I don't like black here, especially yeah. not in a blitz game. And I'm, I, I, I'm sure I'm sure he'll way. also play king h1 at some point to make you feel a little bit more comfortable. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, black needs to do something with the bishop on c8, needs to do something with the rooks. Where's the counterplay for black? Where's the counterplay? Yeah, he's got an outpost. White definitely okay, does not want to play the... Bishop I, takes e4. But he definitely does want to play knight d2. So he comes here to harass. He's got to find ways to harass white. Knight c3. Okay, that was his idea. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that that it, something feels off to me here, David, because I now you have, like, no defenders around your king. So what if I just play, like, queen h5 back to where it was before? Mm -hmm. and there it yeah. is. And... Now the one guy defending your king is off on c3. Bishop d7 played. Mm -hmm. Now the good thing for for black is that if I try to just play like f5, then you get to play e5. So I really want to crack open the position with f5 and f6, yeah. but not that easy to do. I mean, you can already consider it. it. 
I think yeah. it's not yet good, but it's it's close to working, which is very bad sign for black. If you calculate, there F it is. What? Oh, oh! I thought you. I thought you. I thought oh, it no. happened on the board. Sorry, I was just yeah. going to show a quick variation to show people that it's close to working. If we go f5, f6, and then queen h6 check, then the king has to defend this pawn on f6. And if he goes to e7, queen g7 wins. So he has to go to f7, and then white could play rook f6 check and trade the rooks for the queen. Or bishop takes h7. Which is not quite good enough. Or they could play bishop takes h7. And I don't necessarily think this is great for white, but just the fact that it's already so close to working is a very bad sign for black, right? That white could do something that will make it work. Oh, he just played f5 for real. For real. Yeah, no, I think, I mean, I don't know about you. Bishop h7, I think, might might be pretty good for white. Might be good enough. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah maybe. Uh, he's played e5, and now are we going to see f6 immediately, or is there like a pre-move? Maybe on uh, f6, black will play e4 to block the bishop out and allow f takes g7. Oh, boy. Wow. Because that would be his a... counterplay would be something in the center. I don't know, though. Maybe I can play the in-between move queen g5, David. Yeah. I, I mean, I might die for sure. For sure I might. F6, <laughs> F6, e4, queen g5 instead of taking on g7 right away. I think that move looks pretty powerful. Mm-hmm. Because then I'm going to be yeah. taking on g7 with, with really terrible terrible effect oh there's just takes yeah. on g7 and queen f7 mate pointed out by greg so there's just an immediate mate actually he's played f6 f6 played uh so you can't play e4 no can't play e4 i think he has to go for your line david but i didn't really like that that much because there would be this okay so you think he's got to just take it yeah because if he plays g6 <laughs> Then this f6 pawn is just in there. That's like an extra piece for white. And white can get his bishop to g6 before e4 gets played. And white can play queen h6, queen g7 at will. No, no, no. No, so, I think he's going to play your line. I think he's going to play the line we first looked at because I okay. don't see anything else. Wow. Maybe there's something else. I don't see it. This is sick. So the Marshalls um, players on first and second boards, Miranda and Azarov, they're not like household 2700 names like you know Ponomariev's a former FIDE world champion I guess in from the old days yes. when their knockout was called the championships but you know world champion or not you know he was over 2700 MVL you know over 2700 but these guys Azarov and Miranda they have performed above their ratings all season long that's how the marshals win every match partly um, well, that's what I love about the Pro Chess League. You know, when it when it comes down to it, when you're playing for your team, some of these uh, grandmasters who aren't as famous can show what they got. Yeah. And we got two takes up six, by the way. I he yeah. agreed that the problem is you got to take the pawn because the pawn is another attacker, David. Mm -hmm. And you just do the math. You can't defend against the 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 rook, the queen, the pawn, and the bishop with yeah. zero defenders. So you got to at least gamble roll the dice see if you can ha somehow survive this queen h6 king f7 bishop takes h7 line i love that advice to just count it up <laughs> just like you can't you can't play if you let white have an extra piece on f6 so yeah oh he he's cashing in for the queen cashing okay. in for the queen this is a light surprise to me i wasn't expecting him to choose this option you were thinking we would we would see the line with the bishop takes h7 i yeah. was thinking you would play some line with more with more pieces on the board yeah he could play with the bishop on h7 with or without queen h6 check. He could have played the move a4. There were like a few, there were a few ideas there. Um, he could have played knight f3. Um, but he goes for this, and he even allows d3 check. Kindarka asks, who considers Panamaria world champion? Huh, a lot of people do. I mean, you know, I, it's not his fault that the world championship was held differently at that time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I, I think it's cool. You know, you just qualify it, be a world champion. But yeah, it's, okay. it's, you know, it's a lifetime achievement, David. So black had to keep the white queen out of e5. And now white would like to bring the knight to f3 and g5. I'm a little bit suspicious, though, honestly, of how white has played this. Yeah, we were just singing suspicious. Azarov's praises. But still, uh, I see what you're saying. I mean, 
the queen and the knight seem to be really well coordinated here, but yeah. black does have the pawn. So if he can consolidate, black's just going to win. And now if you count the pieces, like, it doesn't say that white's going to checkmate, does it? The crude count. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Well, yeah, like, no, he's just got the queen and the knight. It's like queen and knight against, you know, rook and rook and bishop defending. Like, I don't know. Well, there's like d3 check and knight e2, and suddenly these pawns are getting pretty nasty. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I'm pretty concerned here that things went awry for Azarov. And maybe the problem was, because obviously he's a better calculator than I am, um, and, you know, I'm not using a computer engine, and neither are you. Maybe there was something with that bishop h7 line that he saw he calculated yeah that he didn't like something to maybe explore later it was definitely messy like something could go wrong there but right now both of his bishops are sitting this game out so no, we need to get one of them in with like yeah. a4 maybe maybe we sacrifice with a4 so that our bishop can go to a3 yeah but he just played queen h6 check so that's, so that's not the opposite the yeah yeah although, if the queen's going to like dark squares then he needs the light squared bishop but we've repeated once. Well, not yet, but we're... You think he might be aiming for just checks, huh? For, maybe, for a draw maybe by he check. just wants to repeat at this point. Yeah. He could, have, so. he could have played a weird queen g7, knight takes d4 there, which looks super risky, but it he just needs one more move for the bishop on b2 to get through the knight on c3. Um, so black's now thinking about the risky king d6. Mm-hmm just not allowing a draw by repetition just trying to flee with the king because think about it if the king were to get to b8 that would be a pretty nice spot wow now he allows the knight in is his choice so there's an option to go knight e5 but then on king e6 you can't keep checking with the queen it looks wow. like azarov might just want this draw but and that's that's reasonable i mean he probably assumes that grant Chu is winning against the board four of the rafters right now without even looking all right, should we take a look at a couple other games then? As we this one might go to perpetual, we'll keep an eye. It's been a pretty exciting pick, David, yeah. though I have to say. Yeah. Um, I want to take a look at, let, let me take a quick gander around which one might be the most interesting. Yep, looking um, around. How about I'm looking, I'm Lenderman's Alex, game against Froliano? Yeah, that's what I saw too. <laughs> Alexander Lenderman's with Froliano looks right. quite exciting as it seems like Froliano is, keep, is getting into pretty crazy positions in both of the rounds so far good lord he must have like traded a piece for a bunch of pawns to get here right well it looks like alex lenderman is yeah, yeah he's yeah. got a couple pawn <clears throat> he's up a piece for a couple pawns right so this is some kind of an exchange queen's gambit where black sacked a piece to tear open the king's side he's winning back material by force on this a6 to e2 diagonal i'm sure and uh that means that Black's in pretty good shape. He can win here, I think. Bishop d3, rook d3, knight g5. Yeah, just uh, just getting rid of the defender of each yeah. of g2. And then, like, queen d5, queen takes d3, queen a8, check, king h7. And then I think the black attack wins through there. Um, Ooh. Somebody's nice suggesting rook e8. Someone's suggesting rook e8. I know there's simpler moves here for black, like c6, rook e8 and stuff, because the bishop, the rook on d3 is trapped. But I think bishop d3, knight g5 should win the game. So Poor maybe Lenderman. just go for that. As this is, this is going to be your... This is not going well, David, for the Sopranos. They got whitewashed in the first round, and now Lenderman looks like he's going down again. And I well, yeah. mentioned how, how um, tentative their spot in the top four was I and think how important it was they're, for them. They're also, I think, losing on board one. If I click over here, I didn't even show... Oh, no, sevion has got black this game, so he's got two Ooh. pieces against the rooks. So that is actually right. looking good for them. The black's looking good, although it's not yeah. easy, because as we see in the end game, these rooks coordinate really well. Yeah. So it's not going to be easy-peasy technique. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, black but it looks be quite good. Really with, well. an, with a pass C pawn, he doesn't need to like win the fight on the king side. He just needs to hold things together. That's true. So. That's true. Maybe this is easier after this very simple rook f8 move. I didn't really – I didn't consider that. Yeah. Okay, so, so maybe they're getting on the board. But in this game here, back to the more exciting one, Froljanov played rook e8, which looked very solid. And uh, Lenderman has to move his rook to a square where it can be taken. So that's not that's not that exciting. And Froljanov doesn't take it. That's a very bad sign when your opponent won't even take your rook. Uh, it means he's going to do something pretty bad to you in a second. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, 
where's where does he go now queen g3 allows rook h1 queen f2 allows rook h1 every move he can play allows rook h1 except for queen d5 which allows rook e3 but maybe queen h4 first is better before rook e3 just so that it's mate you know like queen h4 knight f2 rook e3 oh oh this is getting yeah bad start for grandmaster alex lenderman this is getting uh, into look away territory it is painful you know i am i am very very close to new jersey so it's tough to see the the montclair sopranos go down like this david yeah but hey there's a lot of rounds left so you're thinking queen h4 and it's almost resignable that uh, yeah i mean depending on whether or not you want to watch yourself get checkmated well, whether you want to let Twitch watch you get checkmated. Whether you right? want, like, all the thousands of people on Twitch to watch you get checkmated. Yes. Yeah. Queen H4, there it is. Queen yeah. H4 check. Honestly, yeah. the only surprise is that he thought for a while before doing it. It's so, so well, brutal. Rook F2 played. Oh, Rook F2. Of course, of course Knight F2 would have <laughs> get him mated. Okay. So, but can't you play Rook H1 and then Rook E um three and then queen f2 that looks really good yeah yeah rook h1 was played with the idea that after rook takes h1 bishop takes h1 rook e3 you're now going to be forced to d2 after which queen f2 is on the on the table mm -hmm. and of course that did wow it did all happen and now the material count is two extra pawns for fraliana he's recovered his material but lenderman miraculously has avoided mate but okay for right. a moment but, but yeah for a moment can't we play rookie too yeah, yeah. he did and, and that's and you can't defend both b2 and c2 so mm. that's I gotta gonna defend be that something. unless you have some kind of check that i didn't see that right. helps you like queen a8 check king h7 queen a6 that doesn't help because we just play rook c2 check and we just windmill off all your pieces and then mate you yeah is there a better move? I don't think so. But meanwhile, we got some more results coming in. All right. Uh, Gabriel, Arthur Gabrielian uh, did win. And if we take a look at the final position there, it's a really nice final checkmate. If you want to just open up the uh, the game against Lee, Liam uh, Vroliak. I don't know if I can. If I can. Oh, you can't. Sorry. If I can I, find I it. Can. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a nice checkmate if, if you Good. want to look at it on the live board, guys. Yeah, for anybody who wants to, for anyone who wants to follow all the games, um, in addition to what we're doing, the command to issue is slash follow hashtag pro chess. And let's take a look at Walter Spielman's game against uh, Sam Bell Sakayan of the Armenian Eagles. Is that going bananas? In the in time scramble, oh boy, Indeed. had to look at that. Eleven seconds for Black with their king just set up to get checked around. Oh, looks like he's not going to be checked around for long. Looks like he's done. Queen Spoolman. C3 check and knight E5 doesn't really help. Rook E5. Oh, God. Oh, my goodness. He wouldn't even take it with his rook, which looked decent. Well, he takes it with this check. So he wow. has to do everything with check because oh, he queen has e2, to do it all with check. One is on the menu. Wow, so he still doesn't have that covered. He's collected a full rook, and the game is still in doubt, actually. Spoolman How is that thinking, even possible? Thinking. We have queen c5 check, right? Yeah. Queen c5 check, but N even there... 97, maybe? Or... And we still need to get to e2 rook somehow. G8, or king e8, rook g8, king d7. No, but then you have the c3 square to, to, to hide your king, right, David? Yep. The king has a square now, at least. So that's what he did. He did queen c5, figured out that king e8, rook g8, we would have been able to, to hide our king. So instead, knight e7, bishop g7, check king e8, rook e5, there goes the, the bishop. But now c3 is open to hide. Mm -hmm. And I think that the king is going to successfully hide. Looks like because, he's getting to a2. Yeah, king b3. Yeah, bishop d5. That forces him to take it, which he's happy to take. Oh my god. The rook gets into the action. B6 and no, E6. No, stop. This game is still going on. Yeah, Spolman was down no. to two seconds before playing queen C5 there. 
Rookie Green six, five. blocking the win. And now they're in an end game, Jen, and it's, nobody's won this yet. Oh, man. <laughs> bishop at six, knight d5. Can he take the bishop? Can he take this bishop? C6. <sighs> yes. There we go. I think he felt like if he didn't go for something, he was going to lose to the H pawn, but that was quite a piece sack. Now he's definitely going to lose. Wow. Yeah. I was going to say, Spoolman's been an incredible performer in this league so far, and has almost never lost, Or, but here he's in trouble. Here he's going down, but what an exciting game, man. I think every everybody missed some stuff there. <laughs> yeah. But let's go to one of the other time scrambles. If this one looks like it's kaput. Yep. Um, Briotkin right. and Sturt. Um, there's actually only one now. Uh, Mikhail Briotkin versus Raven Stewart. Yep. Yeah. And this one looks a lot better for Sturt than the last end game we saw him in. This time he's the one with the extra pawn. But can he win it? 11 seconds each. Yes. Oh, he got the B3 pawn. That's what he needed. That's he's what he needed. It. I guess he's going to have to give this bishop for that A pawn. But will white go for the A pawn or take on E5 to try and draw? I think take on E5 to try and draw. And we have only one other game between uh, Grant Jew of <coughs> the Marshals and Angel Luis Cubas of oh. the Barcelona Raptors. And this one looks like, yeah, I mean, Black should be able to win this. B3, Knight D5 check, King C2, look at that pawn go. Yeah. But, but where to hide our king now? King C4. Well, the migraines are pr are playing practice games, by the way. Like, oh, between the rounds. And here we have it. Black All right, wins. Sturt wins. The I see, I see so, Fressine and Bacro. They're playing, they're playing practice games. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> but let's, let's stick with Grant Ju versus um, Marfa. For some Angel reason, I just don't have Grant Ju's game. Oh, okay. Um, it's at the very bottom. Maybe it's at it's the very bottom of every... Voice. Maybe it's cut off on your screen because it's the very bottom game in my my monitor. Oh, but you're anyway, right. I found it. I found it. Thank you. Regardless, it looks like it looks like White is going to win this one as Grant Ju is up a mm, actually he's up a he's up a piece, but uh, Kubas of the Raptors has two pawns for it. Oh, you did get it. You got it. Good. Yeah. So what do you think? Can White win this? Um, maybe. He could have gone king e4, d4 instead of king e2, d2, and there wouldn't have been the rook check to keep the b pawn on the board. So I don't know. I mean, right now it's looking pretty tough to win. Wait, he allowed maiden one. Yeah, he allowed maiden right, one. A check. Oh, and now he sees it, <laughs> king g4. I think Grant Jew might have pre-moved that. He might have had a pre-move going. Unfortunately, he's, he's under he's 10 to seconds. Come up with a king. Oh, Bishop H4, and now, but now he, he grabs one of the pawns. Yeah. Bishop F2. Okay. Cutting okay. him off well, from that. It looks like he's winning. Bishop G3 is easiest here, not giving the rook any more space to maneuver. That's right. I mean, the rook is almost trapped, right? I so mean, he still, has to, he still has to break a fortress, but um, capturing both bat black pass pawns is a very, very good start on this endgame. Although mate would have been even better. Mate would have been even better. <laughs> Mate would have been better, but yeah. that's okay. Hey, now we at least get to – everybody else gets to have a little bit more rest now. So right. Grant Jew is doing one for the rest of the Pro Chess League teams. Oh, no, I wonder if Bishop G5 type stuff wins here. I think that's his plan because I don't know how else Yeah, he would be breaking through from this time, angle. But I feel like Bishop G5 with the idea that after Pawn G5, Pawn G5, and then we bring our King to G6. And right, and threatening like back rank mate. Yeah, everything's so happy. He hasn't done it yet. I think he's still trying to figure out if it's good. Just move the pieces around a little bit first. But I think eventually he will come across that plan because it looks so juicy. The only other way to try and win is to bring his rook to the third rank, play bishop g3, and dig his king out. And it's possible. Well, he's played rook c3. Yeah, okay, I see, see what you're saying. Rook g3. Didn't he have rook g7 check just now? 
And bishop takes f2? He did. Mm, nice one, yeah. Oof. This one is hey. not so easy. Oh. Oh, but we're g3. Now okay. he's got bishop f6, possibly. Oh, or this time he saw four. it. Yep. All right. Well, this is the last game, and Grant Jew's winning it. As the king does the circle around and grab the pawn. Grant Shu just called me. He said, thanks for mentioning Rook G7. <laughs> and then he got back to blitzing. There we go. Just don't. Is there a way to lose this? No. There's not even a way to fall for <laughs> to fall for some kind of trick. I mean, he's got 18 seconds now, so nothing Apparently can go wrong. Apparently, one of Angel Louis Cubas wants, wants to go grab a coffee or something. So he's like, come on, just keep the game going so I can get my coffee. <laughs> I'd, I'd appreciate that as a coffee addict. Yeah. And then we have the second queen, and Grant Jew wins it for the Marshalls. I'd say it's a good sign for the Raptors that, that Kubas was able to play such a competitive game with Grant Chu, who's like probably like the best board four, uh, or, you know, if not the best, one of the, you know, best. So, um, and Kubas is this unknown player with the low rating. He's sort of like potentially the weak link on the Raptors. He's the only reason I didn't pick them to win this uh this battle royale. So hanging in there was was pretty good for him. And I, I am su Suyu says so Grant was listening to the commentary. As a no, joke. The, no, no, no. David Bruce was just making a joke. <laughs> David Bruce. My 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 phone rang and I answered it, you know, cuz I've got like, you know, babies strewn around the city and if they have an emergency, I have to know. So I held the phone up and then covered it with the joke. But yeah, they need, to, they need to bring back the beeper so that like you only get uh, <laughs> just, calls from your kids so that yeah. more more kids with more parents with young kids could still play a tournament. Yeah. Anyway, we've got Miranda versus Andreken. We've got Miranda. Um, starting. This, is, <coughs> this is going at a very fast pace. This is nonstop action, right especially for Grant. His game already started as well. You know, like he had like a two second increment between his games. <laughs> but let's get situated with the standings while we're getting in the first move. So yeah. note that the Marshals and the Migraines already got their four points by. So these yeah. standings are a bit misleading. It's actually the Mosquitoes that are completely crushing, right? Right, because the Mosquitoes had a genuine 4-0. Like, they actually won a match 4-0 and then 2-2 in their next match. Right, right. So you got six out of... So so Mosquitoes so far are technically on top, uh, yeah. but who the, else has... Uh... The Marshals did their normal thing. They just barely won against the Raptors, two and a half, one and a half. The Marshals always just eke things out by the minimum number of games to win. Right, right. And the Eagles, we've got a request for for more Eagles games. For more Eagles. Well, I'm sure we'll be able to honor that as the round goes on. Let us know if you've got any more specific requests. Yeah. Uh, we did see, I remember we saw Sargassian, uh, Anna, um, winning on on board four earlier. We did. We also saw Teresa Hockian win that wild game against Spolman, which was one of the most thrilling games we've seen yet today. Well, but let's um, go to, uh, of course, the the game that everybody's um, mouth is watering over is Maxime Vachier Le Grave versus uh, Vallejo Pons. So yeah. we've got the Migrants versus the Raptors. Yeah. We got this eighth, six Queen's Gambit declined, which I just cannot wrap my head around, even though 27 after 2700 is playing it nowadays. And he goes into an exchange Queen's Gambit structure, very standard, and Vallejo plays the other rook, pawn to rook three. And now it looks like Maxime has a choice. Does what does he want to do here? Does, is he ready to castle David, or does he have some other plan in mind? Does he want to try to like maybe take use of the fact that this pawn is on g3 and even consider a castle and queen side? Doesn't that look suicidal? H6. What do you think? H6 is fine if he plans to castle king side. It's also fine if he doesn't plan to castle. No, no, no. Kingside. I mean for white. Oh, like, is white going to? MVL right now is thinking. Is he thinking about not castling? Maybe playing for queenside castles. Um, G4, or G5 would be a possible lever. Um, if he went for that, he could also play a very weird move here with knight to E5. Um, because black won't won't really want to play F6, having played H6. 
Well, yeah, because then we'd be able to play Queen H5 check, and you know that would be an embarrassing finish for Vallejo Pons. Yeah, so he can plop that knight on E5 if he wants. Okay, he goes for Queen C2 for now. So um, he hasn't he hasn't given uh, Black the address of his king yet. As yeah, we like he to hasn't revealed it yet. Although Queen C2 does sort of like give a hint of queenside, like you were suggesting. Sure. I mean, it looks really... The thing about castle and queenside is it looks so dangerous with your king only being on c1 and black clearly geared up to play b5. But yeah. that said, white's just got the lead in development. So certainly has to be considered. And there it is. Queenside castles for MVL. This is going to be an exciting game. I think um, pawns yeah, might sir. mirror him. I think pawns might want to mirror him. That's why we see him developing his queenside pieces. I don't know if it's going to be as easy, though. I mean, he's he can do it, but he's going to be a little behind. Um, as Bishop F5 mm -hmm. played, now you're thinking just like Queen E7? Yeah, Queen, is Queen F6, Queen E7. Got it. But um, And then takes on E6. If we take on E6, what would you take with the pawn or the queen? Well, there he actually played Bishop takes F5, which surprises yeah. me a little because it seems a little scary to let the queen out. But his idea was just to play Queen F6. Huh. So now white could play G4 if he wants to hold his position. He could play queen c2, and black can't castle queenside because of knight d5, which is slightly annoying. But I think black was thinking that, you know, on queen f6, bishop e6, queen takes e6, the queen would go to e6 anyway, so maybe now it'll go to e6. So queen c2 played. I like your idea um, that you can't play um, that you can't play cancel queenside because of knight takes d5. Yeah. So maybe now queen e6 is the logical move, trying to castle queen side. But uh, e4 is also on tap, David. Yeah, it is. It is. And if I go for queen e6, then maybe white would play e4, pawn takes e4, pawn to d5 even. Something like really aggressive. But if white gets too aggressive, then maybe I can, then maybe pawns can castle king side after all. <laughs> See how that is going to play out there. Well, I'd like to honor a request and take a look at Sam Sevian's game against All right. Andreasian of the Armenian Eagles, as this game looks like it's pretty exciting. Um, a queen trade is on tap, but in these types of French endgames, that's often something that white wants to avoid. Uh, if you want to take us to Konovets versus Z Zavin. Okay, Konovets versus Zavin, sure. I clicked on the wrong one first for a second, and oh, it was right. also a French, so that was oh, oh, gosh. Yeah, well, confusing that, that for a exciting. sec because that was kind of like the national opening for Armenia for many years. Yeah, French I mean, defense. that one looks really exciting, too, if you want to look at it after. I just yeah. found this one to be kind of strategically interesting because yeah. I've tried to play lines like this with white, and I always feel so miserable if queens come off the board, right? Because I, I don't have much going for me anymore. So can right. should white just avoid the queen trade here Maybe. with something like queen b5 i'm mean, the thing that's nice for white here is that the black rook is disconnected from the fight for the c file right so if white traded queens they could immediately play rook c1 and black has to just give the c file to white but if white thinks they need more than that then they could keep queens on the board and still try to play rook c1 like white could play queen b5 or something and and wait for rook c1 yeah, I'm definitely playing. I'm definitely not trading queens here, is white. I'm definitely thinking I'm playing queen b5 or something like that. Let's go to the other okay. French that you accidentally the other French pulled up. That I actually. Because that looked pretty exciting too. Alex <laughs> it did. Right? He just traded queens though. By I think as I was clicking, I think I saw the. Yeah, I guess I I was wrong because he just has this very concrete idea of getting the c file. So strategically, I, I I always feel like I lose these, but but Sam's just got a very concrete plan. And then he played knight b3, uh, which we'll take a we'll check in at right after this. Okay. Yeah, sorry. So, so this is what so happened. He, the knight came to b3. So another Sam, by the way, playing with white, right? Yeah. And and this is this is kind of crazy. This is like playing the French against the French or something like that, right? Like um, Alexander Lenderman is playing the French against Teresa Hakian, who, you know, probably played against the French more than any other opening growing up. <laughs> oh, and by the way, uh, somebody corrected me and said that this was actually a Carol Kahn defense that looked like it looks like a French now. Um, the oh. one it was Zayden. But that, okay. anyway, it was still um, it was back, still a French at that going point. Back this, going back to the game with Lenderman, yeah. uh, let's situate ourselves in this position. Why right. is this not just really good for White? Yeah. Well, probably, but it's complicated enough that I need some time to really answer for sure because. 
it's possible that black could just trade the dark squared bishop off at some point. As I say that, he plays a very odd move. Um, no, this just looks terrible for black. That, though, that because... yeah. Your king's on e8, and you're not up any material, Yeah, right? no, I was thinking, like, maybe we need to calculate black taking the pawn on d4. Maybe black could play, like, bishop e7 or g7 and trade this bishop. But, no, the Fianchetto knight is is terrible. The mechanics had a match earlier this season where three of our four players Fianchetto their knights, and we lost all three games. Somebody so. asks why the pawn wasn't hanging, um, and I think they're— there was some issues because I'll your show it real quick for them. Right? Yeah, it's basically it's not that long to calculate. Actually, you just need to do the calculation. <clears throat> you trade you the just... knights, then the white queen moves, and black is left with the rook and knight hanging. That's right. So it's just a so. pure double attack. And yeah. thanks uh, to Tien Khan for the question. Yeah, but that hanging pawn also for me just made me say like, well, maybe things aren't so clear, maybe there's something going on, but all you have to do is actually play out the moves and really ask yourself the question you're asking and then you see that All right, Poor Lenderman's Lenderman, trying to dig out. David. I don't I Lenderman, I feel like Lenderman is not having a good day, David, and it's it's uh it's kind of sad because maybe he's not a morning person. <laughs> <laughs> he needs that, you know, he's, he, he likes to play at night or the afternoon. Isn't it noon on the East Coast? That's kind of like a morning for a chess player, Is that David. chess morning? Chess morning? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and meanwhile, the, uh, people yeah. see the mis Amsterdam Mosquitoes got the four point by this round, so they're up to a really imposing looking 10 points. <laughs> it's <laughs> imposing, like... but yeah, all <laughs> three of the... All three of the top teams you see in the standings right now have four points extra than everybody else, people. So, but so have also played one less match. So it, they are they are somebody is going to get that, and that's because look at the Moscow Phoenix. They did forfeit all their games. That's why they have zero points. To get your best guess, sometimes you'd have to subtract two points instead of four because they've played one less match. Anyway, um, yeah, the standings are just going to be a small source of confusion all day. I can sense. Um, but anyway, um, looking at this game, Lenderman is still digging his Kings doing something. I don't know how that's going to help. I guess he's playing Knight to E8 to challenge the F6 square. Oh, by the way, the Montclair Sopranos, did they go 0-4 in the first round? And then I think we saw a game yeah. that they lost as well. They so did. they must have won the three that we hadn't been watching as closely. Yeah. So not doing quite as badly as they were before. Yeah. That's good. Uh, although, like like we said, this game looks very unpleasant. Oh, there there's Lenderman trying to crawl his way out of it by <laughs> bringing his king over to the g8. Just like the other game that we were looking at, which had a rook stuck on h6, here we've got a rook stuck on h7. And to me, it suggests the obvious plan of like rook c2 and rook c1. Um, so I was surprised to see Teresa Hockian play rook to d1 in this position a couple moves ago. But now... Now he makes a move towards the uh, queen side. And Lenderman says, choose your pawn or your queen. That's your, a good. Your purse or your life. They both look so tempting, but I like this. Queen takes f6. Yeah. And he's trying to play with the pieces here because he's already got lots of open lines. The open they did C both file. look good, though, right? It was, it was kind of annoying to have to choose. And he, he, but that's the thing. Like actually, uh, Sarkayan chose extremely quickly. Uh, but here's the thing: what are you going to do about just these simple ideas of knight f4 and rook c1? Your rook on h7 is not particularly participating in the action, and it seems like that's devastating. That's mm -hmm. why knight e7 was played because he he realized that it's kind of better just to get the knight out of the way right away. Mm -hmm. uh, that yeah. also protects g6 in case of knight f4 right yeah well if there's one thing that you sometimes have in the french defense it's time time to fix things like the rook on h7 right time heals everything and the black pieces need some healing to coordinate themselves and yeah we need a plan here for white too yeah so far like white hasn't done anything incisive at all right i mean Maybe maybe Lenderman will have time to play King G7 and Rook H8 and do everything. Well, let's look at another interesting game between Panamariov and Fresene, another big battle between the Raptors and 
the migraines. Okay. Panamaria. Oh, yeah. Zlatan 56 is Lauren Fresnay's handle. Yeah, and Fresnay, this is his second match. Last week he went 4 and 0. So he's bored too, but you got to take him seriously. He also tweeted that the Pro Chess League is pointless without Fresnay. So. Oh, some big, uh, some big egos here in the Pro Chess League. Right? Yeah, so. Um, he's a newcomer, but he thinks it's all about him already. And, um, I guess the first, the first, <laughs> the first hour of our show was nothing because we weren't watching his game yet. But here we are. Now we exist, we David. Are. Now we're there. <laughs> we, we, now we, of course, the person who wanted the, uh, the Armenian Eagles always have a lot of fans. You know, I, I get it. I get it. They're, now he says Armenia very, Eagles, very please. We were on the Armenia Eagles this whole time, man. This, this broadcast is not just for you, although we're happy to hear your opinion. And also the thing about the Eagles is they are the defending champion. So I get, mm -hmm. you know, why people want to give them a little bit more attention. They are so the we defending champion of the league. Yeah. They have that champion quality that when things look close and you're not sure what's going to happen, somehow they they eke it out, right? It, when it's three seconds against three seconds and some kind of crazy end game, it always falls in their favor. But the Marshals are the new team that are like that this year. They're they're the new team where like when there's something in the air, it always falls into their hands at the last moment. Well, what do you say about this position? I mean, it's hard to wrap your mind around. It's, it, but I gotta, I gotta like white just because I'm not down any material and my position just like looks more solid. It's the H um, six pawn for me, but I have the same conclusion as you that I prefer white. Yeah. Uh, let's take a look again at Vallejo versus MVL. As we 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 left that game some time ago because it looked like it was becoming a little bit more slow battle. Even yeah. though we kind of liked MVL. I was pretty interested in Miranda versus Andraken as well. Okay. So Miranda we'll, versus Andraken. Um, let's see. But let me click to the one you're suggesting. Yeah, I think the Andraken one's maybe a little bit more decisive at the moment. We see Vashie and Pawn still maneuvering for the moment. I mean, super interesting. But in the Andraken game, um, he's conceded a protected pass pawn on C5 to Miranda in return for some messy some messy attempts on on the king side but it seems like miranda may have like consolidated it he's low on time though so he's worrying about stuff he's definitely worried about what andraken's up to to have one minute against five Let's and see. interestingly it looks like lenderman is starting to kind of defend we saw that he started to defend against um Samuel to or Sayakan. Yeah. Which is really a key game as as we mentioned, the Sopranos did not get off to a good start. No. King you also see Raven Stewart G2. just battling. This looks so so tense. I mean, if if Black doesn't land a tactic. If Black doesn't land a tactic, he's basically bankrupt, right? Down like a protective pass C5 pawn in an endgame. He'll have no chance. Um, queen D7, that's definitely what Miranda wanted. That's what he was aiming at. That'll keep the Black Queen out of H3. So this is kind of desperate for Andraken. Hey, guys, I want to give you um, an announcement that the standings have just changed. In yeah. order to confuse people less, uh, <laughs> we've decided to give every team that got the bye two points instead of four points. So their actual points on the standings will more accurately represent how well they're doing. So as you see, the Mosquitoes um, used to have ten points for the bye. Now they have eight. Yeah. So this will give you a better sense as we move forward. Yeah. Be more reasonable for the standings. Also more reasonable if you compare these teams – after the standings with other teams in other battle royales because a lot of these teams it's it's all the divisions are mixed together so if like all the teams in this battle royale got four points that would be quite a haul compared to what other teams would be getting we've got a rook sac right. we've got a rook sacrifice from andraken i told you it was desperate had to do something no. 
wow, that's exciting. Okay, what do we do? So if King F King E2, it's made on the board, David. Yep. King E2 cool. is, is made in one. There's a queen bunch of mates possible mate. here. King G2 is made in two. It's, oh, no, with, the queen's covering knight H3. <gasps> yeah, so King G2. So he could go to G2. He went to G2. If he had gone to G1, the knight F3 would have recovered, like, a, approximately a rook. So... Do we, have two, anything besides, do we have anything besides... Uh, Queen trade! The marshals got this one. Yes, that's and for sure. real boy Jurabek had already won his game, I saw in, I saw in the background. Um, geez, he trapped the black pieces on the back rank? That is disgusting. Lenderman's game looks like it's going to be exciting. All right, as, let's go back to it then. As we, I think we've seen a peace a pee sacrifice for this rapidly advancing h pawn but isn't okay. enough tersakian came up with a plan so to speak and it was to sack the knight for all the king side pawns Ooh, wow I, I like how he followed up with queen g5 and rook f f3 to f6 instead of queen g6 check bringing the rook into great position as well and now that knight is not looking as good as the h pawn wait the h pawn is worth more than a knight I think so. I don't know. I mean, Lenderman spent a couple moves there just trying to get his king out of danger, right? Instead of deploying his pieces to the king side. But how do you stop that H pawn? How do you stop that H pawn? Does he even intend to stop the H pawn? No, if you, he's trying to gain some <laughs> counterplay maybe with rook, with rook c1 and queen f1, right? Uh-huh. How though? How are you even getting rid of your knight here? Or is he gonna, or is he gonna just play rook h8 and sack? Wow, that's not gonna be enough. He's though. just going for the b pawn, just the b pawn. Okay, if rook h, if rook to g8, he has queen b1 check and queen takes h7. Right, so exactly. That's what so he's that got was, going on that right was now. The plan. So, and it's not that easy to hide our king. We can't hide on h2 because queen takes f2. Yeah. We could play king g2 just king to start G2. things off. Yep. And then and, I, I take it your plan is to play queen b1. Right, or c2. Queen b1 or c2 probably is what he'll follow up with. Mm. But wow. I can play maybe rook g7 then. Yeah. Queen c2, maybe rook g7 here. He did it quickly. Looking, looking to play queen e6 because obviously if we have a second pass pawn, that would be very helpful to our goal of winning the game. Yeah. Yeah, I think just rook g7 here. Or... We could also play, obviously there's a lot of candidate moves, but we could also play rook h6. And as yeah. I say, he did it. Rook h6, now we are threatening an h8 queen. And if rook, rook oh. h8, there was a queen 7 But instead, the counterattacking move, rook f8, and now queen f4. He did not play the passive move that was expected with rook h8. Instead, rook f8. But Teresa oh Hockin now... was sort of ready for that, too. If queen f4, now rook takes f4, pawn takes f4. Mm-hmm. And because then h8 is coming. He can't stop I'll that h pawn, so he's got to go queen e4 check and hope to keep checking him. But after king g3, queen d3, f3, I think he'll be out of checks. I'll just give you guys a quick variation. Notice right. it's, that Teresa Hakian has 12 seconds, people, so he cannot afford to get surprised by one more resource of Lenderman's. Well, what about something like trying rook, to take on d4 and then hide the king on a6? All right, rook h8 got played. And now Teresahakian gets queen f7, and he's got control of the f2 pawn, control of the seventh rank, but he's not. He's got six seconds left to like figure this whole thing out, right? That's tough. That's Ugh. very tough because we can't play rook takes. We can never play rook takes e6 because our h7 pawn is hanging. That's We're trying to play pressure. queen g7, right? Just yeah. a simple queen g7, and then. Yep. Uh, and then just queen the pawn. So he that's needs, the idea. He needs it to be simple. So he's going for queen g7. Check back and forth from Lenderman. Terrence Hackens up to eight seconds. Yes. <laughs> so much time. Um, also going completely crazy right now is MDL versus Leon Beast. Oh. oh. I mean, it's MDL like is Leon. Leon Beast, but it looks like he just got his piece trapped and had to trade what? in two for the rook. That's right, and it looks like now MBL oh, is... but it's complicated. Then it comes B4. Now what? Queen but A4? Queen A4 check, right? And then trade queens, take E3, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
and that's et cetera, et cetera, et cetera is happening. But how can this not be good for black at the end of the day, right? You Look at how fast that deep on is. There has to come the deep on now. Can the king deal with him? Doubtful. Doubtful. No, he's going for counterplay instead. Nice so idea. He's going F5. for something. F5, and now we can't play knight d6 because you can just take on g6, knight f7, pawn f7, and it's over. Yeah. So instead, he took with the pawn g6. Now, what after about g7, rook h7 here? Rook h7, if bishop f8, rook h8. Good My point. team has the advantage of a minute against like five seconds. But if, if rook h7 just d3, rook h6, no, you have d2, and you can get back in time. So instead, he's uh, just taken on g7 okay. after g7. If we can hold on to these pawns somehow, it could be okay for Vallejo pawns, but that rook on g7 is cutting off the king. Knight d6. We really want to hold on to these pawns, and now the king gets to Here come up. Here comes the king. Oh, my goodness. It feels like, like Vache could even win this one. But can he hold this pawn? Mm. No, I think this will probably be a draw. Yeah, it's hard to Let's hold Let's go it. back to... Uh, oh, God. I was wanted to go back to Zaven. But yeah. we can also just keep on this one until it ends. Because everything is basically an endgame at this point. Except Zaven's Grant Chu's crazy extra game. Night. Grant Chu's crazy game. What on earth is that? Is Black no, perpetualing it's... with a knight while down a queen? Oh my god, yes. 13 seconds left, and indeed, we've got a crazy perpetual on tap. Wow. I'm going to look up this game later, because to get to this yes. position, something ridiculous must have happened before. Um, and, and of course, MVL is now trying to win. He's up the exchange. Can he do it? He's going to try long and hard, that's for sure. And meanwhile, um, Sam Sevian, in a similar situation, he's got the Rook and Knight versus Rook, and he's going to keep playing. Why not? Why not, David? Why not? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, the rook and knight don't have like great, don't have great winning chances. I think. Does MVL have winning chances? What if he? Oh no! If he sacks his rook for the knight and wins the b5 pawn, it's a draw. That's, that's a problem. Because he could have played, you know, rook d6, check, rook takes a6, and won the b5 pawn. But the king upon ending would still be a draw. So how is he supposed to do anything here? That knight on a6 seems to be a smart defense. Right, because it's, it's keeping that rook lock on lockdown. And here we see the move, rook f6, giving up the pawn. Okay, so that should be a draw then. That should be a draw then. You yeah, that's right. Can't. Although, can't. again... Maxime's going to play on for a little while. Wow. Why not? And there we have King versus King. All right. There we have MCL it. And Vallejo Pons played an incredibly exciting draw. And we have just one game left where Sam Sevian is continuing to play on with the <clears throat> extra night against the Armenian Eagle. Yeah. And our standings are starting to become pretty legible at this point. I think with two points for the missed matches, the standings are going to be pretty close to what you would well, you expect can, at the end. Well, basically that you can tell who's doing well, right? Yeah, and exactly. And don't forget that, obviously, the Sopranos are going to be getting uh, something from this game because it doesn't look great for them, that four points, does it? There's the only team... Sopranos mm. and Volga are both doing pretty poorly so far. Yeah. But nobody's totally out of it, David. With a, with a good match, anyone can kind of get right back into things. No, no one's running away a with anything yet. It looks like the Marshals had another good match this round, scoring 3-1 probably. So they're sort of on the heels of the Mosquitoes, who had an actual 4-0 and are in first place. Yeah, somebody who just turned it, tuned in asked if the Phoenix are not showing up. And in fact, they just uh, forfeited today, unfortunately. Um, age of second. Yeah. Um, Bordofano says, hi, sir, can we play? Hey, you can sign up as a free agent at the Pro Chess League. <laughs> yeah, unclear who he wants to play. Maybe somebody in chat, maybe one of us. 
But um, any dangers here for Andreasian? Any pitfalls here to watch out for? Because I know people have lost against Rook and Knight before, so it could be yeah, useful to have it? some Her idea what can go wrong. The Kasparov Polgar game. I think that was that was Rook and Knight versus Rook. I think, but I think so. I'll have to look that up later. But I'm pretty sure there was a Gary Kasparov Judah Polgar game like that. So you always want to move your king away from where, whichever side of the board the white knight goes to. Whenever the knight switches where it is to sort of block um, to block checks from behind, like on f4, and he was looking to play knight g6 and trap the king on g7, you always want to move the king away from the knight. So Gotham Chess says hello, and he says we're not aware of some kind of joke. Maybe you're aware. <laughs> oh, apparently I'm very... Uh... Prescient, as apparent Un42N81 says that the Kasparov Polgar game was a puzzle on Forbes today. Uh, yeah, I, I like... think that might have been the one that Polgar actually won, though. I'll have to check it out. Because Women, uh, Women International History Month is coming up, and I feel like they've they Forbes would be more likely to publish the the historic game that Judith beat Gary, but I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. I'll take a look at that later. All and right, here we have so it. Draw game by the yeah. move. drawn. I mean, Zaven clearly knew what to do with that. He wasn't getting down to five seconds. He was playing it quickly and accurately. Holds the draw, no problem. The Armenia Eagles just get a beak out in front of the Raptors and the migraines. And, uh, yeah, the, I mean, the big score is that 4-0 from the Mosquitoes. That's, that's the difference in the standings so far. They're big 4-0. That's, that's why the Sopranos are down near the bottom and they're at the top. I guess since getting a 4-0, the Sopranos must have scored two and two and a half. So they've done well other than that one round. So I guess they've stabilized. Okay, they've so apparently stabilized. David Chess 2001 is always writing on everyone's wall. Hi, sir, can we play? And he's mm -hmm. written it on hundreds of pages. Got it. Got it. Okay. okay. And now he's posting now he's posting it on a chess face, something about how his Sounds... rating went from nineteen seventy to twenty four hundred. All right. Sounds annoying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I got the high can I play on my wall. <laughs> I get it. I get. I got. Hi, can I play like all the time? So, yeah. I mean, from this particular guy, I do get it. Yeah. So this <laughs> this round, Montclair Sopranos are gonna get the buy. All right. So they'll get two points and maybe get in a couple practice blitz games with each other. <laughs> or maybe just relax. I think this is a good time to yeah. get the buy, actually. Yeah kind of midway through the competition, relax, have a coffee, gear up. As you can see, I keep mentioning coffee, David. I'm kind of obsessed. Uh, yeah. Have you had any today? Oh, of course. Of okay. course. Otherwise, I'd be like my head would be on the uh, the computer. <laughs> <laughs> and so you're starting off with Andrekin versus the first board for the Armenian Eagles. So I'm sure our, our many friends of the Eagles are very excited to see us start with this. Yeah. The Volga, Volga Stormbreakers are doing really poorly, David. Yep, they are. They only got three and a half points. So they gotta, they really gotta make something happen. They don't want to get, um, get trashed because remember yeah. I, I mentioned how tentative their standing was. Yeah, and they did really well last week, so they needed to like build on that. Um, here, but out of the gates, slow, and we're already three rounds into this thing, like. That's quite yeah, a start, four, right? I mean, three three, three rounds, rounds right? three rounds bad start. They've got four rounds left. It means, you know, it's already not looking like they're going to get first place today. They just have to, you know, salvage everything they can get. Exactly. <clears throat> exactly as you know, <laughs> eighth place. We know they're not going to get as obviously the team that forfeited will get that. But the the points start to go up uh, three points for each place. So seventh place is three points. Sixth place is six. And then add that to the fact that every point you get gets added to it. And you can see why um, every point here could really have uh, a devastating or 
um, flourishing effect on your final standings in the Pro Chess League and whether yeah. you get relegated and whether you make it to the playoffs. Your brother says that at least they have no chance of falling behind the Moscow Phoenix, who are right behind them in the standings. So they're not going to lose ground against the team that's forfeiting today. But, I mean, they, they want to score some points and move towards the playoffs, I think, after how well they played last week. So, And the Delhi Dynamite <laughs> has only half a point more than them. Mm-hmm. So it, it's just really tight there. The Moscow Wizards are also not that far ahead. It, yeah. The other three teams in the Eastern Division are, like, way ahead. Right. But it's that it's that fourth spot, right. um, especially with the Armenian Eagles doing well again today. I think they're, they're almost unreachable. Um, right. So... It, yeah. it's all about that fourth spot. Can they get it? And yeah. they got it. Exactly. They got to start playing better today. It's the wizards and the dynamite that they need to, that they sort of need to focus on and, and see themselves as competing with. Absolutely. I mean, I told my guys for the, for the, uh, for the battle Royale this, this evening, right? Like we just need to finish ahead of the sluggers. Like whether, whether, you know, we're in second and they're in third or we're in sixth and they're in seventh, like, you need to you need to do better than the team in your division that you're competing with. So, all, all right. right. So Andraken with a closed turn to open Sicilian, and let's see. Is there any opening out here that you love? Anything that that grabs your fancy? I'm seeing. There's a lot of exciting openings. I see a Benoni. Um... In the game between Anna Sarzian and Alexi Ivlev. Yeah. I've got... There's a second Benoni between Briakin and Artur's Gabrielian. Do you like Do you like the Benoni? Oh, I think it's a lot of fun. I also am interested okay. in Vallejo Pond's game against Luke Van Whaley, just because the Mosquitoes are doing so well. Um, right. Are they going to get that 24 points? It, it does make sense to, uh, it does make sense to that, look actually, at the first place because... team and see how they do it. Yeah, because this is also a big. This is a big game uh, with the Raptors um, debuting such a, a, a tough lineup, especially on their first two boards. Um, can this be the downfall of the Mosquitoes? Let's see. Yeah, I I the, like this last move by Vallejo F four. The New York Marshals point out that we also have a little thing going that we have an incentive to finish ahead of the two St. Louis teams tonight. If we do, the Marshals are going to buy dinner for everybody on our team. So. The Marshall Chess Club? The New York Marshall's chess team. Yeah. Oh, who's going to buy the dinner? They're going to buy it for the mechanics if the mechanics can finish ahead of the St. Louis teams. You know. Oh, when are you guys going to be in New York, though? Oh, you mean they're going to just like Postmates, send you know. some money on Postmates? Maybe when they come to the, to the Final Four in San Francisco. Ah, okay, okay, nice. Just make sure you collect that dinner because I have a lot of experience in poker and the gambling world, David. Yeah. You, you got to collect your bets because nobody's going to collect them for you but you. Okay. <laughs> I, could offer, I could offer some guy half a dinner to uh, go threaten them. <laughs> <laughs> I want my pizza and ice cream. <laughs> yeah. All right. Those are, those are, so. hard. Those are hard to collect. Those, the, those small bets are hard to collect. That's why, you know, you, one, one piece of advice, never make a bet for like $20 or $10. Unless you know it's like somebody who actually cares about those amounts of monies. Because mm-hmm. if you make a really small bet with someone, they just forget yeah. about it. They just forget about it. All right. Yeah. So make it big enough that you, the other guy remembers. Mm-hmm. They remember Whatever their whole life is. how much money they lost to you. <laughs> Whatever that number is, make sure that it's enough that they can afford it, but that they remember it. Okay. okay? Like, All right. So Some it, betting advice from a pro for everybody here. That's an extra thing that you – an extra <laughs> – an extra bonus yeah. here today with the chess. See, that's what Greg Shahadi says. He says, I always make really small bets, so I never have to pay when I lose. Oh, man. See? Dirty. That's what he does. So you had to learn this stuff from a very young age w- growing up with him. He was always trying to not let you collect on anything. <laughs> okay. Now, I should also point out you should also not bet an amount that you, can, uh, that you, can afford, that you can't afford to lose. So it's about finding that sweet spot. Mm-hmm. Enough that – you'll that it matters so that you guys will actually not just joke about it but not enough that you know it, it's gonna hurt you but anyway about this position yeah Vallejo Pons what do you do you like I, his game here or I do. are you feeling black I do I think these positions tend to favor white he's got sort of control of the tension on the king side with the f4 pawn possibility of getting his rook in and uh and um yeah, is Greg going to forget about the 10K if we win the fantasy chess bet? 
No, don't worry. I live two blocks from him. I'll help you collect guys. All right. <laughs> just, just call me up. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, in terms of liking it, I mean, I think there's some pressure on the D file. So Van Welle has to defend the D6 pawn. There's potential pressure on the F file. And uh, Van Welle gives up part of his center in order to mix things up. Interesting approach. Well, otherwise, his position just looks so passive. So it does look passive. And, and Luke Van Welle is such an <coughs> active player by nature that I feel like I like this. You know, let's, the let's dream... get some activity. Now, what do you take here as white? Do you take with the bishop or do you take with the pawn? Pawn for sure. The dream for Van Welle would have been to play knight b8, knight c6, knight d4. But I guess that just wasn't working out. So he goes for e takes f4. And but, and pawn takes f4, Vallejo agreed point. with you. Uh, and then immediately bishop f6, kind of seizing that a1, h8 diagonal. Yeah. So now, you know, the white queen comes up. The A rook needs to come to the D file or the E file. What can go wrong? No, we wrong? don't have to calculate E5 because E5, there is bishop takes G2, which conveniently also attacks the rook on F1. Ah. So bishop takes G2, pawn takes F6, bishop takes F1 would, would not be good for white. All right. And now if only I could just sort of sketch a sad face on the board, that would be perfect. <laughs> All right, so what could go wrong? I guess we could lose the e4 pawn while I'm doing my thing. Like if I play like queen d3 and black plays rook a8, rook, I mean rook e8, and then I bring my rook to d1 or e1 or something, then what could go wrong would be bishop c3, queen c3, bishop e4. I suppose. I suppose something could go wrong. Something could still go wrong. So rook c1 was played. That means that unfortunately... Something could go wrong for pawn. So what he's doing is instead of trying to develop this rook, he's going to plan to defend his e4 pawn with his queen and use his rook to recapture on c3 as necessary. Um, whoa! It's been captured already. Van Welle has something very concrete in mind. He's just going to go knight f6. He's going to attack the e pawn a bunch of times. And with the white bishop on e3, there's no way that white can sustain his center now. Oh, wow. that's interesting. I like that. I mean, I didn't... I, you'd have to... It's kind of a way to punish this move. Um, takes it at four. Yeah. So what about e5 now? I mean, e5 is very playable now. Bishop takes g2. King takes g2. Pawn takes e5. Just trying to transition to an end game, right? With then queen d8, rook d8, and bishop takes on c5 in some way. Yeah, um, because I don't really like the idea of losing my e pawn, David. Because I think yeah. like. Then my pawn on f4 really sticks out like a sore thumb. He and just played e5, like you working. suggest. Yeah. So he, he did play e5, and it looks like... Let's move over to the MDL game, as this game looks like it might be transitioning into an end game. But the MDL Miranda game, okay. on the other hand, looks quite exciting. All right. With, uh, Miranda's king on e1. All right. And Miranda overperforming, as usual, for the marshals. He's already beaten a 2700 today, and now he's going to take on a near 2800. And what's going on here? So if, what happens if knight takes a, a4? I mean, this is crazy. Miranda's got two heavy pieces doubled on the fourth row, and Vache is still able to bring a piece to a4? That's weird. Um, knight takes a4 does look good. On bishop takes a4, knight to b3. <laughs> Exposing all those attacks on the bishop isn't that like winning for white yeah that's what you're wondering winning. if it just wins <laughs> scratch, scratch. We had time for if only we had time for bishop takes b3 but rook takes d8 rook takes d8 and the bishop's just hanging look at miranda's clock he's got three minutes against we seven and a half like this early in the in the game and bishop c6 doesn't work because we're going to lose the bishop at the end of the variation Knight so three, after knight a4, six, knight takes a4, and knight b3, will he play it? Is it just? It looks like it's just winning for white. Yeah. He's still thinking about it. What's what's wrong? I mean, and MDL's with would MDL hung a piece this early in the game? Is, are we missing something? Maybe after knight, is there another, is there an in-between move after knight takes a4? Like, I mean, queen a5 check doesn't help, does it? You just play knight back to c3. Yeah, I mean, unless there's something illegal about knight c3, but my interface let me play it. Um, 
but is this going to be a case of mutual blindness? And now that MVL sees Miranda getting so low on time, he's got to come up with some way to keep the position interesting. Even if he goes down a piece, he's going to keep playing. That's for sure, David. Yeah. Night A4. I mean, it, the clock is a little concerning as, as the, uh, as the marshals are admitting in, in chat as well. Like even if white's winning a piece, if you get under a minute against MVL, like, a piece piece odds might not be enough against this guy. So what? I think Miranda's got to make a choice sometime soon here. I I don't and see. Knight, you can't just go back to D seven because Knight C five. But what about and and again? Well, Knight C five. There's Queen A five check. Oh, so we have to play Bishop B five. Maybe Bishop B five, and then MVL could play Bishop takes B five, Rook D eight, Rook D eight, which is totally oh, okay. Totally well, playable. Like, I mean, that's the kind of scenario, like not playable, well, we, like it's we have good. B4, but though, uh, didn't we have B four after Knight C five, Queen A five check? Oh, maybe. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, he's played something. Let's see what he's played. He's played Queen takes B seven, with one and a half minutes. And he just spent three and a half minutes on this move, and then doesn't take the piece, and now he's low on time. Oh no! So there was something the that center. he saw that obviously he calculated knight takes a four furiously. Yeah. Something that he didn't like, and now he's just taking on b seven. But boy, <laughs> I like the theory. Right I like now. the theory that he spent those three and a half minutes calling his mom to tell her that he was about to beat MVL, and then he's like helping <laughs> his mom log on to Twitch. Right? He's like, "No, mom, you go to you got to Twitch dot org slash chess." Is that in my outlook? No, mom, no. <laughs> but um, now he's going to lose, I think, right? I mean, he's got a minute, and, and MBL is king's in the center. MBL's got all the pieces out. No, 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 no. It, it's, this can't be. Uh, it's too bad. He should have just played knight a4, bishop a4, knight b3. Even if there was something he saw that wasn't that clear, it would have been better than taking the pawn on b7. Oh, this... like, that's just way too dangerous to play with one minute. On your clock, <laughs> top player in the world, one of the top players in the world. Yeah. God. Uh, this just looks like, like it's just hell with the king in the middle and no time to make the moves. Oh. <laughs> I broke the chat, Jen. I broke the chat. I know. That's I know amazing. people like your joke so much. <laughs> I completely broke it. <laughs> it's just a string of deleted messages. <laughs> Uh, hey, now, now, now they found their dumb. now they, they found their emotes. Me. That's fine. They gave up on trying to type words. <laughs> All right, let's move on to another game. Is I think he might just go down here. <laughs> you don't want to. You don't want to see Unless the king see in the center. More, okay, yeah, let's see some more blood. I normally like seeing kings in the center get get taken out, personally, but uh, no, 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 let's keep it going. So, what do you think is going to happen here? Um, uh, something knight like d3 knight d3 check. check, bishop d3. Queen d3, rook c6, rook b1. This is the kind of stuff I like, see? And then checkmate. That's what I want. Um, bishop b4 was played instead. What? That's just too confusing. <laughs> it's just too confusing. Is he just playing rook a8 to a2? Is that is that satisfying to Maxime? Maybe. He hasn't moved yet, though. We have Jackie the Swede say, Greetings from Vienna. My daughter just broke up with her boyfriend. Best thing ever. <laughs> Best thing ever Best except thing. for the Battle Royale. <laughs> As now your daughter is no doubt watching the Battle Royale. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> random information random. added to the chat. Okay, Queen T5 was yeah. Maxine Bastier Legrave's choice. Seems Miranda good. was not surprised by it. He played knight d2 instantly. He's gonna, he's gonna have to play a few instant moves this game if he wants to rook salvage d8, this. Though. Rook d8 looks almost looks like it wins on the spot, except there's this rook c2 move. What about, what about? You want to play knight c4, c4 right? I want to yes, play knight c4. Me too, yeah. Jen. Let's do it. Knight c4, know, bishop like so c4, rook b1. We're gonna play a helpful knight to b1 move to get our checkmate. But I think I that know. that king e2. Would make our beautiful move not as would, nice. Would spoil so that's all our fun. Knight, but, but, you know, he chose something similar, trying to seize the uh, first rank. He played knight to d3 check. Yeah. But he could have then, done it when the rook was on c1, and white would have had to take. I don't quite follow. 
knight d3 check and now after king to e2 what happens now uh does he have rook b1 now i was thinking about that so rook b1 you and i are on the same wavelength rook b1 knight b1 is there like knight f4 knight check f4 king has to come to f3 oh there's also just queen takes e4 in that position as well yeah exactly which is just simply good i think I mean, the, even this one with king f3, then you play like f5, maybe no bishop c4. Okay, let's see what he's doing. He must have done something. No, he hasn't yet. No, he hasn't. He's on d2. He's still trying to figure out the best way to win here. Jeez. By the way, I should point out that that game between Logan Van Wiley and Bayo Hopans was a draw. Okay. So that's, that's a big one to watch as, of course, the Amsterdam Mosquitoes are so far leading. And yeah. Certainly, they're going to be more likely to continue with that lead if uh, the Marshals loses this game. Yeah. Well, you don't have to look at it. No, no, I just clicked there for a second to give people a taste. But back to this Miranda game. I mean, Vachier could look at knight c1, knight f4. This is so complicated. And uh, I'm impressed that Miranda has kept a minute on his clock because he was at a minute 20 and he had to navigate some weird stuff. Rook b2 was MVL's choice. <sighs> Oh, that's kind of evil, right? Because it's so simple. If he trades rooks, then the knight's attacked. And if the knight moves, he loses the other rook. Queen c7 played Queen quickly, C7. pretty quickly by pretty Miranda. Quickly. Now knight Good c1 job. check. All right. The king can't go to d1, I don't think. Well, actually, it could because then on rook c2, you play king c2, getting out of that. Queen d2. King d1 oh, but then queen d2. Happened. Okay, so what's going to happen? We don't have queen d2, right? Because you can just take twice and take on c1. Yeah. So what to do? What to do? Do we have... Hmm, do we have... Knight b3 looks like a Actually, he move. does. He could play queen d2. He even could. What about knight b3, though? Is that a nice move? If pawn b3, we have rook b1 check. No, you just go back to e2. He could give the queen. I, I think he can. There's so many moves. King c1, rook d1, king up, and then rook t second to d2. If the king comes to a3, you've got bishop f8. If the king comes to b3, you've got rook b1. I guess all you're doing is collecting the queen eventually for your but, rook. So the whole point of queen c7 is we can't just play queen takes e4 because there's queen takes d8 check, right? So that's basically Miranda's yeah. idea to try to save, right? Yeah. I don't want to... So we, we also have like something like rook b1 here, right? Rook to b1, sure. Yeah, setting you up can't... those checkmate threats we talked about before. Yeah, you can't take um, because you can't take with the knight because it's pinned. And if you take on c1, there's queen takes d2 mate. Yeah. So, but rook takes c2 was played. Rook takes c2 played. Queen c2 and knight a2. Bishop c4. Look how fast he's playing. Look how fast he's playing. Is there knight c3 check oh, here? Queen, queen e4. Queen e4 queen first. E4. Yeah, just queen e4 queen first. Queen e4, queen takes e4, knight c3 wins. Yep. But he played knight c3 check first. Okay. Which also wins, although I think the other way was better, but maybe not. Because other, oh, maybe he, he had queen e4, queen a2, and uh, Maxime didn't like that as much. So he's going to take on d2 twice this way, is that right? Mm hmm. Yeah. Knight c3, queen c3, queen e4. He liked having the queen on c3 more than having the queen on a2 in this line. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Because we don't lose f7. Yeah. Well, wow. this game was intense. This we game picked was a good intense. game to follow, David, although yeah. now that the dust is cleared, and the is clean up, up. Now up it's a couple minutes, yeah. and he's got all the pawns, too. I'm going to give this one to him and go look somewhere else. And there, and that was exactly what Miranda <laughs> Miranda did. agrees. He's like, I'm going to go look somewhere else, too. Um, So we've got Bryovkin. We've got the real boy playing. Oh, that's a huge matchup. Real boy against Sabag. What's happening? They're okay, both let's take a look. Oh no! So, it's it's Jurabek who's queening. It's Jurabek yeah, he's who's queening. queening. First. So he's winning this end game. That's right. So that's a big comeback. He had there one pawn against three. There must have been a really cool pawn breakthrough. I'm going to go back for a second. King f4 on move 40. It looks like Black's going to win, right? They've got the h pawn. The king's coming across the fourth rank. B5, king e4, c5, and you can't stop the c6 breakthrough. Wow, Jurabek with the king and pawn skills. Nice. Yeah, nice nice game there. An important yeah. win as... They needed course. that because it looks like the migraines 
may have beaten their top two boards, looking at how the standings have changed. Um, right? I mean, I mean, Mosquitoes at 10 points. It looks like the Migrants wow. had two and a half points on the other games, but the Mosquitoes again. Wow. But the Mosquitoes actually still have a game underway also, so Are don't forget that not only, not only do they have 10 points, but Leonard Dak is still playing with the White Pieces against Angel Luis Cubas, and he's got a disadvantage. He's a down disadvantage. a pawn. He's down a pawn, yeah. So Sometimes in positions like this, or often in positions like this, you can blockade the bishop pair. But and this is Angel Luis Cubas. It seems to be doing really well today. He's wow. the lower rated player in this game by almost 250 points. Let's see how and he's done so him, far. We saw him doing well in another mm. game. Unfortunately, he's lost all three games so far. So that's that's he's getting close. Uh huh. Is there night? No. Oh, okay. But this one he'll get done. I mean, he's either yeah. going to win or draw. Though he's not going to lose this game. Yeah, he's not going to lose this game. Wait, why didn't the king come to c4? I ha have no idea. Bishop oh my gosh! D6, I I guess. Mean, now, it's, how's he going? Oh, he's, his plan is just bishop e7. Bishop it's very e yeah, simple. It's like e7. you trade bishops, yeah. or I get this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, bishop e7, and then you just play for c5, right? Yeah. So this should be clean up. Yeah. Oh, Greg's saying it's faster for me to just read his chats than to check things. Sorry. I'm used to just taking care of everything myself. All right, okay, so we got a huge looks like he's got this. Looks like he's got this huge win for him. So that'll keep the mosquitoes slightly in check, though not by I much. I like that. I like that because I, I mean, obviously, I have nothing against the mosquitoes. I do have something against mosquitoes, but not the mosquitoes. Not the mosquitoes. Um, but I like keeping it close, just so these last couple rounds are going to be very tension filled, right? Yeah. To who gets the big twenty-four point? So now I'm checking out um, Gabrielian, um, Artur Gabrielian, trying to convert a queen end game against Briakin. Never easy to convert a queen end game. No, because but, there's always so many checks. But these the pawns of ever, his, these pawns of his are close. All right. Okay, he, wait. So what's going on here? He could uh -huh. queen. It's like the last ditch perpetual attempting from. Yeah, from that's. White. I don't think that we, we there's anything wrong with queens. Indeed, he did make a queen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, his king should be able to escape to the queen side here and wrap yeah. this one up. <clears throat> and that'll be the last game. As yeah, let's take a look at the standings. Game. As uh, we see, this game might go on a few more. So that'll give a, a more seconds. that'll give a point to the Eagles. And things are so close that right now it looks like they're in fifth place. But when they win this game, they'll be in second place, tied with the Marshals. Tied with the Marshals. That's right. Yeah. As the Volga Stormbringers are still going to be in second to last. And the Sopranos really need a boost to get into those higher spots, you know? Yeah, I mean, I guess they're only a point and a half behind the Raptors. So it's not like it's not like they're out of it. No, they're not they out of it. They, two -two they, they scored another 2-2 this round. They scored another 2-2 this round. So they are scoring. They're consistently scoring some points. I think it was all about that first round where they did really terribly. It's hard to recover from but that. But after basically. an 0 4, they need some, some good rounds too, yeah. Um, Loose Cannon 1 says Eagles are champs until someone knocks them off. Respect. That's yeah. right. The defending champions. Yep. The Armenian Eagles. That is true. That is true. You always have to take the champions seriously, even if, like, you know, even if they weren't at the top of the standings in the regular season, you would want to take them very seriously in the playoffs. Um, as it is, they've been consistently in second place behind the Tbilisi gentlemen this year. For those of you who are just tuning in, we are midway through the Battle Royale here at the Pro Chess League, the first of two Battle Royales today. The Battle Royale is an exciting format that we have every few weeks at the Pro Chess League. And the way it works is it's a round robin between all of the board ones that are playing that particular Battle Royale, all of the board twos, threes, and fours. And you're competing not only for individual points, but for bonus points based on how many points your team gets. So the big number is if you get first, you get 24 extra points. And so this is a really big shakeup for the standings as last place gets zero bonus points. Yeah. Now, in this case, we had a forfeit from Moscow Phoenix. So we are not going to have anybody 
except for them get zero points. We know that. Yeah. Wow. So Still. as as somebody pointed out, the mosquitoes have gone two two every match except for that four zero. So they actually like that one four zero was enough that they haven't even had to win another match, and they're in first place halfway through. I feel like we might Just be having our like that. two minute break because it seems like the uh, it seems like the games are, the games are restarting a little slower than normal. Instantly start like every other time. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. So I'm gonna be. I'll, I'll be right back. Okay. All right. We'll wait for you. Yeah, so just one match win, 4-0, and then you just put up a bunch of 2-2s and finish basically at the top of the standings in this in this format. I mean, not bad. Yes, if you chose Phoenix players for your fantasy team, you are in a sad situation like I was in last week when I also picked somebody who didn't play. Um... So, so far, everybody in chat, who do you expect to win after seeing four out of seven rounds? Not who do you root for, okay? I may be rooting for some for one team and think some other team's going to win. Tell me who you think is going to win based on the results you see so far. So, the Mosquitoes, one point ahead of the Marshals and the Eagles, and then another half point ahead of the Migs. I mean, the Raptors are within two points. There are four teams within one match victory of passing the Mosquitoes. We got one person saying the Marshals, one Barcelona. And we've got Marshals versus Armenia will decide it probably. And someone still thinks that Barcelona Raptors could win the match. Eagles, Hello. Marseille, Marseille, Marshals. Hey, we're, we're guessing with the information we have from the first four rounds who's going to win this battle royale in the end because we've got five teams that are within two points so you know in one single round the raptors could pass the mosquitoes um, yeah we got a lot of votes for barcelona i see a fair that number of votes for barcelona yeah it is like one of the best cities in the world isn't it and their board four did just win a game and that's their weak link like if he can win a couple games or draw a couple games that's like enough for them um the New York Marshals are voting against themselves. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would bet on yourselves. You're still doing well. <clears throat> they said that their match against the Eagles in the last round would determine it. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. That that seems like a good bet. Although, what about the Mosquitoes? They think that the Mosquitoes are going to lose some ground in these next couple rounds? Apparently, yeah. Hmm. All right. Leon Beast is in action against, and Fresine is in action against. Etoile génial, thinking about the first move or just, you know, trying to rush back from the coffee break. Oh, it's the Marshals versus the Mosquitoes. That's a big matchup for who's going to win. You guys, you guys may have a better idea of who's going to come out in first after you see this match. Azarov That's and right. Spalman. I know Armenia fans are being like, hey, this this match doesn't really decide anything. <laughs> yeah. Of course, I guess if you're the uh, the Mosquitoes, not the Mosquitoes, if you're the Eagles, you kind of want this game to be maybe about 2-2, right? Somewhere around 2-2 is ideal, yeah. Yeah, you don't want anyone to take a big lead. Every time your rivals play each other, you want like 2-2. I guess 2.5 for New York would be okay also because then New York and Amsterdam would balance out at about 11.5. So... Two or two and a half would be perfect for the Eagles there. Um, See a big right. game between an MVL and Draken. Yeah. We've yeah. got a um, basically like a Philidor version of a Peartz or a Peartz version of a Philidor out of Andraken. Um, I've definitely seen him play the Peartz before. Um, and I think getting in the move B5 is a small accomplishment for black um if you can do that early without a problem so andraken's opening looks okay so far and mvl's bringing his knight to the king side so on g3 pretty much all it can do is sack itself on f5 right yeah that's that's what the only thing that a knight on g3 is good for I, I and think... uh, i like <coughs> I like Sevian's game against Vallejo Pons. That looks kind of exciting. Mm -hmm. As we see 
Sevian get castles in very quickly, and Vallejo pawns potentially on the back foot. Wow, and c4, sort of a, a pseudo pawn sack, but probably not a real pawn sack because of some queen a4 check tactic. If pawn takes c4, Sevian was probably just going to take back with his bishop. And pawns answers with c5, and Sevian comes forward. Look at that knight on f5. This is intense. I mean, Sevian is business here. Hello to Cash here. Benke, apparently... Oh, uh, wait, Pons got him to retreat. Pons managed to get him to retreat with g6. I thought he was going to play like rookie one or something and say, my knight's here to stay. I'm here to kill this round. But he actually stepped back. Yeah. <coughs> that said, how quickly can he develop here? Because if you play bishop g7 and I take and then play, um, like, even just, hmm. I'm just wondering if I play like queen f3 and bishop g5, it seems like you might have some trouble getting developed quickly. Something something like this maybe. Queen on f3, bishop on g5. But the queen on f3 is being looked at by the bishop on b7. That's sometimes awkward. Hmm. Yeah, maybe that's not the best line. I, I'm just looking for something that concretely takes advantage of the fact that you're not castled quickly. Right. I would really love to get in e5 somehow to take right. advantage of that. So, I mean, if white goes bishop f4, the, which would be, you know, a principled continuation, then black could consider either bishop b2, bishop d6, bishop a1, or they could just play bishop e5. Very solid, try and just block things. Just knight c3 was played, <clears throat> which seems like a nice move, because anything you do with the b pawn, we can play bishop a4 check, mm -hmm. which is going to be really annoying with your king in the center, right? Yeah, and maybe he's trying to threaten to win a pawn on b5. Like, if you won't take on c4, eventually I will take on b5. That's right. And, you know, you can't defend it with the queen because I would still be able to play knight b5. Queen b5 would lose to bishop a4. So queen d7 doesn't suffice. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah, that's right. Or queen b6, right? We just get to take. So he just traded it off. And now we would expect to see white, well, normally you expect to see white open the A-file, but here maybe queen b3 puts oh, that yeah. pressure on b5 that white wants. I think so, because uh, if queen b3, mm -hmm. b4, the thing, about, the thing about it now is that after b4, queen a4, there is queen d7. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. So maybe queen b3, b4, keeping it closed, but mm -hmm. then this move a3 that you just pointed out looks kind of nice. It seems like that's what, what white wants to do right now is open something, and what black wants to do right now is close things. So that all makes sense. Which is interesting because usually with the two bishops, you want to keep things open. But in this case, the, the presence of your bishop is overweighted by the fact that your king's still on e8. So open lines are going to kill you. But it just goes to show you how like you have these general principles, and sometimes they get, they're in conflict with each other. And chess is a very concrete game. Yeah. So knight takes b3, um, Sevian's still deciding but whether to take back with the queen or the pawn. Uh, so maybe we can take a look at another game. Yeah, that's quite I... a think about which way to take. Okay, and he did pick the queen way. Yeah, that seemed like the right choice considering the situation. Wow. Even the... though, yes, positionally, I, I like taking with the pawn. The Vachier game developed pretty quickly here. and um, mm -hmm. Let's go back to that. He, cracked, he, cracked, he cracked a pawn on yeah. b5 here. Um, I guess he sacked his e pawn in order to get the b five pawn. Well, that's interesting. And then rook a one, knight c five. So now he takes there. I mean, Andraken seems to be like super well placed in the center after capturing the e four pawn, as one normally is. As one normally is, if one captures on e4, one's well placed in the center. I think Andraken's done well this opening. And then rook to d1 played. Yeah. I guess MVL is going to try and make a big deal about the about the pawn on d6, right? He's going to be like, don't you forget this pawn. It's a real problem. 
Undragon wants to defend his d6 pawn by putting a knight on d3. Yeah, so the knight could come to d3 at some point. Then on b3, you can always play d5. I think it looks pretty decent for Andraken. How are their teammates doing? Frolianov and Fresine, the battle of froofy people. <laughs> uh, looks like a declined Benko. Looks slightly good for white, maybe, the this fake Banco. What do you think? Yeah, it, it looks a little artificial for black, right? Like, the harmony seems a little strange. Of course, bishop d3 is a threat, but it's really easy met by this move, queen b2 check, either before or after. And yeah. I'm a little worried that after king g8, I, I have knight g4 just running mate in one. Always Ooh. a bad sign. Of yeah. course, he can play f6, but now here he comes with f4. Froliana and... wants to crack this thing. Yeah. Like, wow. I, the, the harmony here for black and their pieces is just not there. Yeah, I think you I think you and Froliana have both picked up on something that I wasn't thinking about quite properly. I mean, this, this knight on b7 is bad, and, like, the queen is kind of stuck in a weird spot. So he's trying to just crack things right away with e5. I would have thought that after queen a6, my bishop on g2 is not that great. My first thought would be play bishop f1, trade the bishop to deal with d3, right? And then put the knight on c4 and sort of play positionally. But if it's a momentary, like, harmony problem for black, then actually it makes more sense to get frisky for white. And queen b2 f4 and trying to crack with e5, I like it. <clears throat> So Fresine is trying to find a square for his knight on c5. That could work out for him. He wants to make it more of a real Banco. <laughs> he wants to make it more of a real Banco. Get that knight to c5. Make white regret pushing. Well, white's pushed. He's got to keep pushing, right? I mean, there's no time to regret. If you regret and let black develop the knight to c5, pressure the b file, pressure the e pawn, I think you just have to play e5. You got to do what you came to do. The yeah, real Greco points out positional play is lame play. Not just because I came up with it this time, but always, I guess. Oh, you gotta you gotta have positional play to checkmate your opponent. It's it's hand in hand. Mm hmm Those good moves set you up for good tactics, right? Yeah. Queen And instead of E five right away, Queen D four was played. Interesting. That's a beautiful square for the queen, isn't it? It is a very nice square. But what do you nice do on, hmm, I was thinking. On God, queen b6, you trade and then just take that pawn on c4. Right. So I'm trying to find a good move for black here, actually. It's kind of hard. So black could play something like, he did He did it. play queen b6. Yeah. I he mean, play queen b6. I guess he's You're thinking right. at least he gets a he gets a banco then, right? Some kind of a banco. <clears throat> Yeah, queen b6, so do you take him with the pawn or the knight? You're taking with the pawn to get a tempo, huh? But what happens with the bishop now? Knight c5 required. He takes with the pawn because if the knight got traded off for that bishop, that bishop's like one of black's few problems, actually. Yeah, I, I, it doesn't. It still doesn't have any squares, right? But luckily right. that knight on c5 is just such a rock. I mean, it almost it sort down. of has the e4 square now. <clears throat> this knight is really good, yeah. Yeah, I, I wish I could. I wish I could play knight g four. He's just mm -hmm. playing e five, just cracking things open right away yeah. because he didn't want to lead. He didn't want to lose that pawn, obviously. Yeah. And now, but what black if you just even, take twice? Black could even take twice, right? Because then yeah. when the knight moves, you play e five e four. Right, or you just take on c4. Both need to be calculated because if if takes twice and knight g4, if takes twice and then knight g4, e4, knight e5, I'm not sure. Yeah, that's what happened. And I that's think he might he, now. There's a big decision for black. So do you take on c4 or do you play e4 like you suggested? e4 
84 to 95. Yeah. Okay, that happened, E4. Yeah. So, so now on 95... Oh, we played Knight F2 instead. But it's... I mean, it's somewhat similar for Black that what I'm going to want to do is probably defend my E pawn so that on Knight D3 I could take with my E pawn. Oh, but this way White can take on E4, whereas with Knight E5 you only had the one option to take on D3. So, yeah, so this attacks both. That makes sense. So the extra option for Black this way is that they could take on, on C4 or they could sack the exchange. I am partial to exchange sacrifices. May I play rook f2, king f2, rook a8? Come on, Fressine, the world's watching. This is the real pro chess league now that you're here. What have you got for us? Yeah, rook mm -hmm. f2, king f2, rook a8, rook d2. Yeah, and then I want to play bishop c4 in that position, maybe. Mm, I was hoping I'd have some kind of tactic, but it looks like I don't quite. Will he do it? Let's take a look at some other games. Um, I'm looking, I'm keeping my eye on Van Whaley versus Miranda. Okay. Leon, let's take a look at MVL versus Andraken again. Okay. Ooh. It's degenerated. <laughs> exactly. It's degenerated into like wild striking at the opponent's kings. Okay. Okay. I see how it is. Somebody wants to get checkmated. You got to be careful, right? You can't play rook d8 because then there's queen a1, check king g2, queen h1, and block out there first. It kind of sneaks up on you, right? Because you're not used yeah. to seeing that rook on h3. Yeah, no. He's bizarrely close to your king. <laughs> so wait, is this just good for MVL then? What's going on? Or can we just... The rook on d1 does a good job defending if we don't release it. So he's if just playing don't queen e5. Go for rook d8. <laughs> Still can't go rook d8. But takes on h5. Takes on h5. Allows rook takes h5. Rook takes h5. And then we have a new avenue for the rook on g5 as yeah. well that you have to worry about. And the rook's pretty good there. So drawn. queen e7 was played. Yeah. And it's it, drawn. it looks like the game was just drawn. Okay, we let's denied move on. our checkmate dreams. I it's know, like, I know. Okay, like how sadness. about Lok Van Wheelie versus Miranda? Yeah. Looks looks promising for Van Wheelie at the moment. This knight on b8 is no star. That's right. It does look promising. And Miranda's you down. You can't queen b8 because there's rook e8 check. Always looking for those tactics. Um, so how do you deal with how do you deal with this bishop getting attacked? Miranda's down the same one and a half to five and a half minutes. No, this looks good for the mosquitoes, who are the top team right now. <sighs> um. Of course, there's also other games going on in the the marshals versus the mosquitoes, including a game that looks yeah. we're not going to go to it, but a game that looks kind of equal against. Um, Vrolyek and Urebek on board three. Mm -hmm. And then Azra versus Spoilman, which we looked at earlier. That one looks pretty exciting as well. Yeah. So. And then finally, there's one game, there's one other game I'm missing, Grand yeah. Jew versus Leonard Deck as well. And Froliano is, has, has gotten through on the e-file against Fresine. So he's recovered the pawn that he sacked and maintains a, a pleasant position for white. By the way, Grant Ju is up six minutes on his opponent, Leonard Dak. So that that's looking good for the marshals just based on the clock alone. As for the position, I mean, it's uh, something that we'll definitely look at later. I think white's a little better. So Yeah, if white can grab this pawn in H7, then he's up a pawn for he the did. moment but there will be counterplay with knight c4 to b2 maybe so yeah he does have counterplay but look at that clock. Oh, now there's rook d5 oh, oh no he just had rook d5 winning there after king g7 right i mean well you could take on h7 right and then rook a5 but then rook a5 yeah take everything that's right you would take more than uh, the other guy yeah two for the price of one Two for the price of one is a I'll good deal. It. He was just so happy with that pawn he got, right? He's like, I got the pawn. Let's get out. <laughs> I think we've seen that from Grant Dew in another game where he was like, 
he was starting to win and then like he missed like the maiden one and it didn't really matter because he won anyway but in the future it could matter yeah that's the weird thing i was thinking like this guy's like the mvp he's the god of the fourth board but um but uh he is missing some details here and there but he still if he wins every game i guess it doesn't matter i guess that's how you stay six minutes up on the clock you just play like safe quick moves but you're not going to notice everything playing at that speed (laughs) exactly you're not going to be a perfectionist when you're up five minutes on your opponent yeah as king woke king woke won won that game where he seemed like he was in big trouble so the mosquitoes get a point if the if the uh grand jew does win as we expect that'll be even steven oh gosh it was such an easy win too i mean when the bishop ran away from f6 he just had bishop g4 just i mean look at that diagonal the knight on BH one problem, but I mean the rooks are just lined up. If F five, the knight anywhere wins the game. You know, knight B six, knight E seven, knight F six, whatever. So, so rook just five, lost. queen just D five, and he resigned. He's losing another piece too, right? The rook or bishop? Yeah, it must have just been completely lost. I mean, he spent all the time he had. There was no way to get out of it. And then uh, let's take a look at Urubek versus uh, Liam Vrolyk. As right. it looks like Liam might have just made a move. That shakes things up a little bit. There's, he's, he's yet oh, to wow. recapture his piece here. Right. What? This was weird. I'm going to go back one move so people can understand what's happening. White sacked the knight on a5 for a pawn, then follows up with b4, and but, basically becomes a very fancy trade into an equalish position. I'm surprised to see Jurabek trading his knight for the bishop. But this one's probably going to be a draw now, I would say. But you think knight d5 is stronger. Honestly, yeah. yeah. Well, I Honestly, big... I think he introduced a small danger of white playing like b6, queen c5, queen c7. Is that not? Yeah, a small danger indeed. You're right. And with the pawn on this square, white can still put his queen on, you know, c6 or d6 or whatever, right? And you need to hold that. And then h4, h5 to poke and then bring the king up somewhere. Whereas if you kept the knight, the knight was was great. But let's take a look at Azarov okay. Spielman because that's the last game to go in in this match as this one is still likely to be drawn. All right. Azarov Spielman. But Azarov Spielman looks like it's still quite rich here with this pawn on d6. Yeah, that's a pretty serious pawn. Black. Pretty serious pawn, but if somehow that queen can enter the attack, this could actually be really good for black. Right. I mean, black would but want to play a move like f4, keeping the tension, but then bishop e4 check might be too strong. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And so he's played knight takes f3, but is that a good move? I don't know. That knight looks so strong. The idea, I guess, is after king f3, I then think, g4 and f4. I think he's going to play queen e8 check here before he recaptures. Oh, no, if queen e8, then queen f7. Force mm-hmm. the queen trade and get to the d pawn in time. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So I think he'll play king f3, and then maybe we'll see g4 followed But what about f4. queen e8 check, queen f7, pawn to d7? Oh, okay. Interesting idea. Doesn't that win for black, for white, I mean? Yeah. Queen so e8. I, I, if, if that's the case, then after queen e8 check, we have to play king g7 instead. The Eagles must have scored a lot of points. I see them surging up the standings while we're not watching their games. Queen e8 check. And then if the king queen moves. E- and then king g7, d7, right? D7. Yeah. Well, king queen wow. g eight was played instead, and then king h five. King h five. Queen e eight check now. Yeah, if king g four h three is mate, this is over. Nice. White wins. This yeah, is that's over. Right. Azarov did it for the marshals here. Oh my goodness. Oh, Armenia played Moscow. That's why they suddenly got two points. Isn't that mate in one? Uh, and then we have h three mate. That's a beautiful checkmate on the board. Oh my goodness, Azarov. I think this guy's got a lot of points, but if I click to his profile to see it, Greg's just going to type it in chat and tell me I shouldn't have wasted my time. So Look Azarov, when we've seen him play today, I think he's been scoring. So Of course Armenia played Moscow, David. Don't, don't you think Armenia Eagles legions of fans would have – would have been screaming in the chat. If we <laughs> would have been there games. with their pitchforks by now if we didn't look at their games. Yeah, I mean, they're probably mad that we didn't look at, like, the, the games against the, the Moscow Phoenix. <laughs> the forfeit wins. They're like, this round was pointless. We didn't see anything here. Oh, <laughs> Jurabek's found a good defense, I think. I mean, he, he's down to 16 seconds, so he had to work to find it. By, but by bringing his king into the middle of the board, he can handle queen c6 with just a queen trade now. 
So good. Azarov has two out of four. Good centralization. Four. Two out of four. All right. So he won when I watched and not when I didn't watch. Um, Sevian versus Vallejo still going on. Mm -hmm. Alex Lenderman versus Panamariev. Yep. Um, with Alexander. Alexander with the extra night. Extra night. That's right. Alexander about had a to, slow start today. About to upset a champion. Well, that's what the Sopranos need. Although in round five, it might be too late. Well, every point counts. Every because point counts. It's, it's never too late to score a point. That's right. Don't let yeah, me say that. It's not just the bonus points. It's also your points, right? And look at this Raven Stewart. Is he winning yeah. as well? Two. You know what's better than one point for the Sopranos? Yeah. Two points. Look Two at these points. knights in the oh game between goodness. Raven Stewart and uh, Carlos Diaz Camalongo. Wow. There's there's a recipe for checkmates somewhere in there. Queen F7 check he started with King H8. Yep. And then bring Queen the H5 other knight check. to F7 other knight. to checkmate on H8. Nice idea. That was it. You saw the recipe, and it was there. Yeah. Oh, boy. The the Sopranos making a huge rebound, potentially, in this round. Wait, and, and the other just... game just finished before I could click on it between Konevets. Um, Konevets won against Vallejo. Vallejo. Konevets won? I don't know how. I uh, well, then they're, well, then they're basically like sweeping this team this round. Well, that'll get yeah. them back into the mat, into the into the oh Royale battle thing. That's a strong team team to sweep, baby. That's an unreal result. Wow. Knight f6. Look at those knights doing their work. Now the next guy falls. The bishop on d7. Oh my god! And the the indeed the this is going to leapfrog the Sopranos over the Raptors if Stewart wins this game. He's definitely winning this game. <laughs> and they're going to be only half a point behind the Marseille migraines. And the Sopranos are 100% back in it. Raven Stewart won wow. by resignation. The Sopranos are going to go to nine and a half ahead of the Raptors and within creeping distance of pretty much everyone, except maybe the Mosquitoes. Mosquitoes are still really, really uh, doing very well. Still a point, Still a point ahead. Still within striking distance for the Marshals and the Eagles. So how did that match go between the Marshals and the Mosquitoes? It must have finished 2-2 since there's still exactly one point behind yes, them. It did. It did. It, it did finish 2-2. It was all decisive games, I think, though, right? So the standings did not change at the top three spots. But where the standings changed were the Sopranos, like, just knocking, just clubbing the Raptors and taking their spot. That's the right. Now it's super tight. The only team that seems like... They're going to finish in very good standing is the Mosquitoes and the Volga unlikely to finish well. But everything yeah. else is completely in doubt, David. So the Marshals, right. We saw Miranda lose to King Loic, which was compensated with Azarov's nice win. The Grant Shoe. So what happened in that Queen ending that we were watching? That's the other one I wonder about. Um... The queen end game. He lost the queen ending. So Jurabek lost the queen ending because Grant Shu was like winning easily, it seemed, right? So that mean, meant that Jurabek lost his queen ending, which means. Right. Yeah. Which means if, right. he had, if he hadn't traded his knight for that bishop on b5, they could be tied with the mosquitoes at 11 and a half in the standings. That was good like a, point. And I mean, you, you picked up on that immediately, David, that that seemed like an obvious it seemed like it not didn't seem like an obvious move i mean knight d5 looked more obvious yeah but it seemed like a move when you had less time that you might play it just to simplify but that it actually your desire to simplify just caused you problems right yeah and in fact i mean in addition to knight d5 another move would have been maybe queen e5 defending the knight on c3 and keeping it on that square um, but I think that's the moment where he put himself into some trouble. I mean, perhaps with like great play, that endgame could be drawn. I mean, it's an equal material endgame. No, no majority, no pass pawn, no nothing. Um, but it, it was just like it's a position that's a little bit hard to play, and he had under a minute and eventually somehow got, got tricked out of his draw. Let's see. Round move 60. He still had the shape that he wanted. Oh, and then he put the king on f6 instead of e6 because of queen a2 check. So now he needed to come right back to e6, but instead he made a queen move. And that allowed queen d8, picking up the b-pawn. And there now this kind of endgame's really tough now. Huh. So... 
so that's that's how he lost it. I mean, could he have? Was it as simple to still draw it as to just play king e6 here? King e6 here, maybe queen e8 check. King. Maybe. Maybe it's okay as long as his queen's covering these two pawns. Yeah. So the losing move was probably that queen c4 move. On move 61. But, I mean, he had 15 seconds and had to play 20 moves in that endgame. Huge implications here for the Amsterdam Mosquitoes, who had just a small margin of um, fourth place over the can blitz streams, right? It was 87 to 88 and a half. But looks like they're going to actually take a really nicer position and, you know, potentially even go over the Barcelona Raptors, right? Mm -hmm. Who have 96 points in the central division. Yeah. But... The it's Raptors hard. the Raptors only have three points less than them in the standings right now, but if they finish like this in the Battle Royale, the Mosquitoes will get like 20 points more than them because of the bonus points. Exactly, exactly. So that uh, that loss of the Raptors to the Pranos is, is really bad for Barcelona, as they're going to find themselves in, you know, not a great position. These next few rounds are going to be really important, though, because as you said, David— the race is so tight that one point in the standings could mean like, you know, a, over a dozen points and bonus yeah. points. Yeah, that's going to be insane. If this if this battle royale stays this tight till the end, I mean, we've had so many 2-2 matches individually, right? Round after round, team after team. If it stays this tight and the difference between like first and sixth place is like two and a half, three points, which is going to be worth 20, that's going to be crazy. So we're getting ready for the next round to start. I think there might maybe yeah. there was another quick break that we missed because I like Yeah. Yeah, I I think that we haven't seen the Sopranos play the Marshals yet, and I believe that's the next round. Okay. We know that the so Marshals that's... final round is against the Eagles. I like seeing the Marshals and the uh and the Mosquitoes fans, you know, cheering in the chat about that last close match between them, two to two. Um Um, Greg pointing out that Barcelona can only do so much because they play Moscow the final round. And remember that so Moscow be a two Phoenix, for sure. so, so, so they're going to get two, two for sure. points only for that. So, so this is the round know... where they need to score three. So that's actually an interesting point. In a way, I think playing them in the end is not ideal because you don't know exactly what you need, David. Yeah. I mean, we had no way to know that it was going to be so close. Yeah. But now that we see it, it's like it's unfortunate for the Raptors that they get the bye in the end. All right. Well, we know, well, the the Marseille Migs know what they need to do here against the Mosquitoes. If they don't if they beat them 3 to 1, they can they can tie them in the standings. So I would say the goal here is to score 3-1 for the Migs. See where the Marshals and the Eagles end up and then see what kind of a score they need in the last round against someone else. But if they don't make up ground on the Mosquitoes, they're not going to, you know, count on passing them in the last round. So uh, we got wow, Bastier here against tight, Ben Welly. It's so tight as all the games are starting, David. I can imagine other boy battle royales, we can maybe start to focus on some key points, but actually every single match yeah. is completely relevant here, right? Yeah, having having cast one, uh, having cast a battle royale and watched like three of them, um, normally it's a little more clear that there's like two to three teams that are in the lead. I think... The last time the Eagles played, they played against the gentleman in the last round, and it was like whichever team won that match would win the would win the battle royale. But look at this, Maxine Fasher Lacrav going for an early end game against Luke Van Bailey, knowing that yeah. really the win is gonna be really important here. So I can I, I don't think this end game means anything about his ambitions. He knows that he has to be ambitious in this match. Yeah. I'm sure the, I'm the sure he's planning to be ambitious. H takes G3. It always creates a nice little advantage into the end game, I think, even with the rook on the H file, the G pawn with a little bit more influence on the game. So, um, if bishop B4, what's he going to play? Bishop E5, knight to D7? Hmm. I wonder how he would answer bishop to B4 here, honestly. I'm just taking a quick look at all the games to just kind of get a sense of what's going to be the most exciting. Um, 
Bishop b4 would really threaten like e4, it would threaten d4, it would threaten maybe to double pawns as a last resort. He would really need a good answer for white. We've got I mean, the my team's round. played so fast that this strikes me as opening theory. But I don't see how to answer bishop b4 myself. Like, I don't know. I don't know how to get a good position for white after bishop b4. Let's move over to the, the tri-state game right. of uh, Jurabek versus Sturt. Um, okay. Raven Sturt, I am for the Sopranos. Yeah. I always yeah, root for Real Boy because of his game at the beginning of the season uh, oh, in the yeah. exchange Caro against uh, Ehrenberg. So I always root for him. Oh, this is an opening variation, a very old school four knights game with the classic three pawns on the queen side against the A pawn and the D and C pawns. Always love to learn something more about this position. Sturt points out, um, New York Marshalls points out that this is treasonous because Sturt works at the Marshall Chess Club. Uh oh. Mm. <laughs> so Don't worry, I'm, some... I'm pretty sure that if he's on the uh, if he's on the Sopranos, he has no allegiance right now to the Marshalls after yeah. the game, maybe. Hashtag fired. Wow. You can't do that on Twitch. You know, people talk wow. about getting dumped on, you know, text message or email. Right. You Get know, fired on a Twitch fired. stream. <laughs> that would be a bad that would be a bad way to get fired yeah although i'm guessing it's happened before everything has happened before right by now yeah twitch has been around long enough someone must have been fired that people have done something stupid enough that they got fired live on stream no way no doubt that that's happened before yeah i mean all it has to be is your job is not streaming and you're streaming and your boss walks in and is like why are you streaming video games at work <laughs> <laughs> well the armenia eagles we got a request for them from our sleepless gm as we see that the armenian eagles are playing the barcelona raptors which will technically be the last chess that the raptors get to play as they get that last point by here's what um, here's on... oh go on. sorry go ahead we got vallejo versus and andreasian okay and it looks like a pretty standard opening here uh, some kind of Benoni, some kind of standardish Benoni, King's Indian type style thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I mean, white has a little bit more space, but this also seems totally fine for black. Yeah. Clicking around. Basically, GM Sleepless needs to get a second person to to second his request for their immediate eagles. It doesn't count as like 100 fans if it's one guy talking 100 times. Well, Sakyan versus Panamariev is also looking very exciting, actually. So I, I feel like that's a request that I can totally Ooh. feel. <laughs> that's, that's us seconding the request, huh? Exactly. Third. Oh, is man. what on rook earth on is going seven. on here, David? The material is actually still equal, mm -hmm. but this rook on c7 can move anywhere and give a discovery. Mm -hmm. I don't see a really great one at the moment. Like, It would be great to play rook d7 if you could take with any if you could take with something and we could play queen a4 check or capture a queen but rook d7 queen d7 just leads to nothing mm -hmm. rook b7 it looks like you can just play queen c8 mm -hmm. and the best you'll be able to get there is a perpetual yeah in fact they did that whole whole game at some point before Oh, we're coming into a potential per perpetual. I see what they've you're saying. Gone, they've gone back and forth once before, before the queen was on d4 and bishop on a3. Right, but white could consider doing that again. I think, although the position's changed a little bit, because now you can't play bishop f2, but you could still play g3, and I think it would work out to be the same. You'd have to go back uh, to defend. But, of yeah. course, uh, Sambo for the Armenian Eagles is looking for something better. <laughs> Yeah. And I don't yeah. blame them. But what? What happens if we just castle here? Yeah. I mean, just castling is a pretty logical option at any point. Um, if you want something spicier, maybe f5. Maybe f5. E takes f5, e6. Well, there's also that pawn hanging on d5. That looks nasty. 
I think after oh, F5. Yeah. If pawn if pawn takes F5, you think just knight D5 would be good enough for white, probably. Yeah, I don't know if you. I don't. I have a feeling after F5, you can't take back on F5. Okay. I'm feeling like if you play F5, you might have to like. You might have to castle. But then white's idea is just get this pawn to F6, and black must be in somewhat bad shape there. Yeah, that's true. I see what you're saying. He's never going to be able to fight that pawn. He's never going to get his bishop into the action. He would have to... I don't know what he would have to do there, but it doesn't look good. <laughs> well, in the game itself, rook b7 was played. Okay. <clears throat> that could make all our speculation very boring if they go queen c8, rook c7, <laughs> queen d8, rook b7, after thinking about it for like five minutes. I want to see what happen, What happens with Vashiel Grav. Maybe he was thinking just like bishop b2 type move for black coming in, just trying to keep pressure in the position. And it, yeah, it looks like there might be a draw of perpetual on that, even though it looked like it was an explosive game, though. Mm -hmm. But let's move over to MVL Logan Willie. Indeed, is this one so critical for our standing? I'm just recapping some moves for everybody to help them orient to what what's going on by clicking through some of the moves that were played so we can see that there was a little push and pull on the A file, and I guess Vachier has left the A5 pawn as a potential weakness. Um, and uh, Van Welly's gained a lot of space, but uh, his pawns are kind of like a little bit stuck, right? Like blockaded, a little bit targeted. So what is what is next for Van Welly? Oh, we've got the bad Knight Fian Keto on, on B2. Never like to see those Knight Fian Ketos anymore. Although, C4 is a pretty good score at some point. All right. And um, how's Azarav Lenderman going as we take a look at more games from our Tri-state battle. Whoa. Hello. Rickard 207. An interesting uh, an interesting F file getting ready to be contested here. Yeah, Lenderman's got his coffee, baby. <laughs> Remember so... he had a pretty bad start, but <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but he's feeling it now. He beat he beat Ponomaryov, so that's enough to make it a good day. If I lost like 10 games on a day but beat Ponomaryov, it would be a good day for me. Rook All F2, right. Rook and F1 coming. But is this that big of a deal? Because Azarav is just replying with Rook F7, Rook F8. Yeah, they all come to the F file, but are they all just going to trade? That would be that would be a boring reunion. Yeah, but I don't see like I don't see an, an obvious way for White to kind of like make use of the space advantage here, David. Mm-hmm. So not sure who's better here and why. I mean, I wish I could like improve my knight on d2 somehow, but I don't see a clear way to do that. Yeah. Just It just feels like uh, black's position is pretty solid somehow. Neither player can really concede the f file, so they have to put all their rooks there quickly. Nobody's yet in position to like outpost on f4 or f5. So Meanwhile, then... speaking of solid, don't go to Miranda or Savion because it's just a uh, trade fest. Ugh. I don't yeah. think we're going to see too many fireworks there. No. Um, but do go to Foyzer versus Grant Jew. By the way, I don't think we've seen a game yet by Sabina Foyzer today. As we, we have somehow not. missed her. Um, former women's U.S. champion in 2017. Right. Um, really nice person. Uh, playing against Grant Jew here on the Sopranos. Night to C3 played. And there are a couple minor pieces hanging here. That's right. So what happens if... So the thing is, if we play Rook C1 here... Then you can play knight e2 check. So we okay. don't we don't have the pin and win it option. No. Nope. If we no. play knight take c3, you don't play rook take c3, allowing rook b8. But instead, you'll play bishop takes d6, and have an extra pawn plus the better minor piece. So this looks very problematic for Sabina. I mean this this knight just came to c3, right? We just had a series of trades on b1 followed by knight c3. So this did happen with knight knight takes c3, bishop takes d6, and now knight e4 yeah. played by Sabina. Bishop b4. I was going to say, like, the mm. is there any way to try to, like, corner the a pawn or That's, simplify? That looks like a very smart move to me because he can't keep the white knight from getting active, but he can keep the white rook from getting active. 
and the knight by itself can't can't devastate. So Sabina has to open another file somewhere. But now after this d5 move, what is Grant going to do? Is he just going to play something like king e7? Because I think taking on d5 and allowing knight takes d5, harassing the bishop, that's a bit of an annoying tempo, although maybe you can just play bishop d2. At the end, it just seems like I'm running out of squares for my bishop on the, the, the key diagonal to protect a5. Yeah. So I'm not totally sure. Not sure it matters. Well, he did take on d5. Did take. And now after knight d5, bishop d2 does contain the option of playing something like rook c1 check, trading off rooks. He might also play rook c4 after knight d5. I wonder if that's a candidate too. Oh, yeah, because the pawn on h4 is hanging. Yeah, that's what he did, actually. Rook c4 immediately. Probably mm -hmm. a very good move. Man, he plays it so fast. I mean, look at this. Seven minutes against three. He's really... He's really in a hurry. Wait a minute. MDL just won. Whoa. Extremely quickly from that normal position that we that we were looking at before. I got to recap this game. Sorry, folks. I'm too interested in this. I got to know what happened. Absolutely. Let's see how it went. Bishop trade on a6. Rook to the fifth rank. I did have my eye on this for Maxime, that the rook lift to the fifth was going to look at both the e5 and the a5 pawns. So that happens. And bishop a3 looks like a slightly desperate move from Van Welly. Like, he didn't think he could just hold his stuff together. So he's going for some kind of tactic. Knight d3 dodging away. Ef4, king a2. He doesn't want to allow knight takes a4 from Van Welly. So he throws this in. Has to make a trade on b4. Recapture here. Now these pawns on the queen side are in awful shape. It's really like three isolated pawns for black on the queen side rather than three connected pawns. So he wants to play c5. And uh, white doesn't want him to. Collects the d pawn. Oh, and he wins with rook d7. Because of rook d7, a takes b5. So he wins a whole piece. But mm, Nice move. If Van Welly hadn't gotten into this whole rook b5 stuff, I mean, if he just plays like knight c5, rook c5, this rook endgame looks hopeless. I mean, he's already down one, and he's going to lose a second one of these at some point. Well, so. going back to the games in yeah. progress, Jurarbeck has an interesting imbalance against Sturt as we see a queen versus two rooks. Yeah. But will it end up being pretty balanced? Good chances, I'd say, as we've already seen a couple of checks here. Uh, in other exciting games, we've got the top board for the um, Raptors against Adria Sion, and I still think that game is pretty... That game's still pretty balanced, I think. Let's see. Bishop pair and Black's pieces are in decent shape. Yeah, if anything, I would think that it's like white who's pushing a little bit because there are yeah. some scenarios where the um, where the bishop pair could eventually become a small advantage. Um, and the black knight hasn't yet found like some amazing outpost. So, oh, I see a cool idea in a game between Fresnay and Spielman. Let's go there. Oh yeah, let's see that because that is that is. You know, whichever match Amsterdam is playing is probably the most important right now. So, look at this possibility of the move rook g4. Does it work though? No, because you have rook takes g1. I was trying to come up set up with a mate because I trying thought the bishop was on e1. Always if there was good. a bitch of money, rook g4, pawn g4, pawn g4. Right. But you could take on g1. I mean, if that's just one control of the first rank, it could be worth considering. But unfortunately, at the end, white can trade on c5, which breaks up our structure. So he can't yeah, quite exactly. do that right now. So B4 played by, Sh by Spolman, he is, I mean, his king's in this weird position, but he's basically just looking to, to crack that structure and sort of equalize against the strong C5 pawn. So what should black play? Just bishop B6? Just bring the bishop out over there, maybe? Maybe, yeah. Maybe bishop B6. That looks like a nice move. Given that mate is basically just a dream. <sighs> I would also have liked to checkmate here. I know. It's fun to look for mating nets, right? Even if they're completely unrealistic. But look at this. Instead, Fresh and A played C4. What? Pawn to C4. That pawn looks like dead, dead, dead. I know. That's why it's <laughs> a, a surprising move, isn't it? Um, man. So what are you expecting here for white? What's Fresh and A's Bishop D2? Option? 
Well, maybe there's just no good place to move the bishop. Maybe that's what's going on. Let's see if that's what it's all about. Bishop if, D2, perhaps? If bishop D2. Then... Then what? Rook G2. Something happened. B5 was played by white. Wow. So he wants to play bishop B4? I guess he wants a better square for that bishop. Um... Yeah, Hammer wants to play rook g4 too, but it allows rook takes g1, so it's not Yeah. It's not the fun that it that it suggests it might offer. <clears throat> I think he's I think he noticed that and probably wanted to yeah. play it anyway. So the bishop just comes to b6 and now Spellman goes to b4 like he wants to. He wants to get into d6 and take c4 and then e5 and f4 and everything all down the row. So um well, Lenderman's game against uh, Azarov has got an interesting, by the way. I still don't see the justification for fressing a c4 at all. Do you? No, not really. No, I'm confused <laughs> by it. But let's take a look at the game between Lenderman and Azarov. As, like I said, it did get a little bit more interesting the last time I saw it. Oh, it's, not all the rooks got traded. So there's no. still some still some wood to, to throw. And actually, it's White's position that looks real passive here. Well, with black controlling f1, it's and hard for white to challenge this attack, right? And you can't take on b5 that easily because you're, you're going to have to start reckoning with the knight coming to c3. And a rook e2 to f2 maneuver doesn't work because of queen d1. I learned that one from Ju Jin -er in her brilliant win against uh, Andrew Tang. And I'm not sure exactly what the follow-up is, though. Like, suppose you play... Suppose after h5 there is queen takes b5. What do we play? We have so many possibilities. h4 might be the simplest. Yeah. I mean, this is really getting to checkmate pretty soon if the queen can break through g3. So h4 would be the first move I would look at as well. And then yeah. I'm but sure queen a4, pawn takes really g3, loses. Looking. So then it would be queen e2. Would have oh, but to this did played. happen. h5, queen b5, knight c3, queen d3, h4. So he, he switched up the move order. Yeah, that's it's to stop white from... from trading queens on e2 he'd rather sack the knight than let white get the queen to e2 like in that other line which would have petered out to a draw so now he plays h4 h4 and now now h4 with the same idea that queen c3 takes g3 and you're defenseless and yeah. what about bishop okay bishop takes g5 okay i was thinking maybe yep. he was going to play the bishop f2 but then knight d1 probably would have been devastating bishop takes g5 is quite a blow from lenderman <sighs> What can nice you do idea. About that? The idea is that after queen g5, queen c3, and you're defending g3 laterally because you got rid of the bishop. Yeah. And on hg3, what, what just, you can uh, even take with the queen, forcing a queen trade. And what if I take on g3 immediately? Mm -hmm. Then queen takes g3, presumably. Oh, he just did something. He took on g3. And then, 92 check. and then 92 check. That's what yep. I was wondering about, with how these discoveries look after knight takes e2, queen takes e2. Are there any good discoveries at the end of the line? I don't know. Well, there's... If queen h3 is another move, he's got queen f2 and then queen e1 check, forcing yeah. the king up. Then rook f2 check, king to g3, or just, and something. Yeah. Something yeah, going exactly. on there. Exactly. Then we can just take on D2 with check or something, right? Lenderman's time. Ticking down. Ticking down. So I think Queen H3 loses. Oh, wait. Yeah, I think Queen H3 loses to Queen F2 D1. So he's looking for I mean, discoveries. This looks, like a brilliant, this looks like a brilliant line for Black. There's a discovery. He's allowing, for, he's allowing all these checks, but do any of them actually work? He's covering F2. So now I think you might need to save the bishop. But Black is sort of up in exchange if they... You mean you can play bishop, bishop g4 here? That's that's the hope. Or queen g4? I I was thinking queen g4 because I thought bishop g4 h3 would be a problem. Yeah, me too. So but I was surprised by the bishop one. Queen d1, Jack. Okay, does he have an idea here or did he just miss something? I mean, maybe he still has a draw with the queen checks. Yeah, but I thought he was better. Yeah, I, right? I agree. I agree. I don't know how easy queen g4 would have been, but it looked like what he was going to go for. Well, there we, it looks like we're getting to a draw. So looks like we're getting to um, a draw with that one. The knights played, are the like, knights are ahead of the mosquitoes right now in points. 
Um, but that has to do with how many games are being played. What's going on in this end game of Fresines here? Pop back yeah, to that for a second. That. That sea pawn is still alive, defying all expectations. The sea pawn is still alive. Right, the sea pawn. Somehow, that move C4 earlier has turned out, and now we have this crazy end game with both players having like only 30 seconds left on the clock. Mm -hmm. Whoa, Rook H3 check, King G4 played. And now we always have to now now you always have to reckon with the move F three as well. King F five, looking to try to checkmate, trying to get the king into the game to give checkmate. Yeah. We could use it like a rook lift or something. Okay, bishop D four, bishop takes D four, into the rook D4. ending, but White's got just an army of more pawns. Mm -mm. Too many pawns. There's rook d2, but we can just simply go play rook d3 and rook c3 now. Yep, yeah, from c3, yeah, so, that's winning. Okay, go so the white's going to win this game. Well, that's big for the mosquitoes. Huge. Wow. And, uh, wait, wait, wait. What they do we have needing left, that. Then? They were needing that point. Um, we've got Grant. We've, we've got, got Grant, Grant still playing. Against, uh, Sabina, but that game's and gonna still go winning. To, so that's going to be another point down. for the marshals. Here come the marshals. Oh, my Lord. And what about... Francisco Vallejo Pons versus the Armenian Eagles. Let's take a look at that game right. between against Avon. The Eagles need some points to keep up with uh, with what the Mosquitoes and the Marshals are scoring here. Let's Looks like see. an even end game with a black still equal material, white having the huh? Two bishops, black having the fast pawn. Yeah. Is there anything here for either side, David? I I have no idea. <laughs> Okay, so this move looks to lock the board up more if the white king has to back off. But he took. But he took. King d3, and the bishop's defending two things, so this is going to win something for mm, pawns, good right? Good point, bishop a5, right. So you got so a little something there. One. Could play bishop d2, but that's not really desirable. So he found something this better. Looks better. Very good, very good. Bishop d2 was undesirable. This, on the other hand, was quite good. All right. But this knight's coming around to d3 to try to get some counterplay. It's spinning around. It's come in contact with the f pawn. But there's bishop c2 also well that could be played, but knight takes f4 seems fine. Yeah. Maybe f5 and then bishop. Bishop yeah. c2 was played. Lowey knight takes f4. And what's the idea here? He's just going to try bishop to play bishop h6. Six. So, oh, he just takes off the last pawns. Well well defended by Andreasian. Yeah, I that think, game easily could have gone down. I think it's fair to say that he was under some pressure that game. A little bit. You know, maybe it was always okay, but he was under a little bit of pressure. And uh, he seems to have handled it. Do you want to see a two bishop versus one bishop endgame? Do we have any choice? No, we have no choice. <laughs> but let me take a look at the standings. Are, sure. Are Amsterdam Mosquitoes with 14 and a half points. Marshalls with 14 points. So they're still it looks just... like those, those two are going to take the top two, barring um, something, well, actually Armenia is only one point behind the Marshalls, I should say, because this game is going to be a draw. So it's going to be 13 points for the Eagles and 14 points for the Marshalls. If I'm Still, keeping track of things correctly, that means the Mosquitoes scored two and a half out of four against the Migraines. So that's really good. I mean, we saw MDL win that great game on board one, but the other boards for the Mosquitoes scored two and a half out of three. And the Marshalls won their match with two and a half out of four. No, sorry. The Marshalls won their match with three out of four to gain half a point on them in the standings. So in order for the Eagles to top the Marshalls, they're going to have to get three points in this final round. They're going to have to go 3-1. Mm -hmm. Tall order, but they're going to try to do it because they're, I, they're not at that much of a risk, right? If like, they score two and a half, they tie with them. If they score two and a half, they would tie with the Marshalls. I mean, in yeah. theory, they could still be aiming for the Mosquitoes. It's like amazing that the Mosquitoes go 4-0 in the first round and then just hold it together every round. In a lot of other battle royals I've seen, there are rounds where you go 4-0, 0-4, like, or at least some ups and downs, you know, three points, one point. Like, the Mosquitoes, I don't think they've lost a single match. They've drawn something like four out of six matches, I think. 
maybe I've maybe I've missed something, but. No, this has been an incredible um, battle royale. We have only one round left, guys. So if you're tuning in now, this is well, it's actually okay timing. You missed a lot, but it's good timing in that you're going to see the climax. You will see the climax here of this uh, this battle for the big 24 point bonus between the mosquitoes and the marshals, with the eagles and the outside chance if they score a big enough score in the last round of getting in there as well. All right, any day now, we're gonna get this started. Last round, this has been really fun, David. Yep. And what time are you streaming tonight for? Oh, for anyone who wants to watch the second Battle Royale tonight, the games are supposed to start at 7.30 and the broadcast will probably start five or 10 minutes before that um, on uh, on Chesscom's Twitch and mine will be the same. We'll be on uh, five or 10 minutes before the round starts. 7.30 PT? 7.30 Pacific time, yeah. So in eight eight hours and 22 minutes. That's right. And, uh, of course, uh, Alexandra and Robert Hess are going to be streaming on twitch.com slash chess as well as Grandmaster Hikaru Nakamura. So going to be a really incredible day for chess as yeah. we see all these players fabi nakamura wesley getting in there and that one also has dingley rent so it's got another 2800 in the mix as well tonight wow i'm gonna be watching yeah have to take a look at that do you ever stream poker jen well i actually live in pa and we don't have online poker with poker stars quite yet oh um but they announced there's a good chance that is coming so at that point i probably will if they if they have it you'll do it Oh, well, yeah. I mean, I can't wait for there to be online poker on in Pennsylvania with poker stars. They're, they're regulating it state by state, so it's going a little bit slow. But New Jersey and Vegas are in there, and PA is supposed to be next in line. Okay. And do you root for the Pittsburgh Pawn Grabbers because they're in Pennsylvania, or are you very, like— or do you have a rivalry between Philly and Pittsburgh? Or No, no, no. I like a lot of the players. I'm a big fan of a Wander, of Jennifer Yu. Okay. But when you got to understand about Philadelphia, we're way closer to New, Jersey. to New Jersey and New York than we are to Pittsburgh. Right. So I actually like, I feel like I know more of the players on the teams from the New York and uh, the Sopranos. Okay. So I'm a fan of a lot of the Pittsburgh pawn grubbers. But, PA, but Pittsburgh and Philly, like, there's not that much. Uh, connection because Pittsburgh is like six hours away yeah so same state but very far very far so close but right. so far so you know more players on those on those New Jersey New York teams yeah and you know the speaking of poker of course uh the Sopranos has Dan Smith who's an elite poker player and Sean right. Finn is the manager who I know well so yeah, there's a there's a lot of people I know on the Sopranos. New Jersey is literally like five minutes away from Philly. It's kind of funny. Like New Jersey is five. You can get to Camden in like ten minutes, depending on where you are in Philly, and Pittsburgh is six hours away. So <laughs> these the states these states are misleading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and here we have the game, the final game of this battle royale started. It you might have missed the. Volga Starmbringers last round. They actually had gotten the bye last round. This round, it is the Barcelona Raptors. So their tournament's over. Yeah. David, the Barcelona yeah. Raptors are not going to get any more points than they have. Yeah. I, I, have they been added to the scoreboard yet? I don't think they've don't gotten think their so. two I think points they only yet. Their, those two points, but yeah. So it's not yet clear, depending on how the Sopranos and Stormbringers do. They could get past or their two points could allow them to pass the migraines or somebody. So we actually, even though they're not playing, we don't know quite where they're going to um, finish. Um, all right, we've got a King's Indian attack from Froljanov against Spellman. Um And we've got a Queen's Indian double fianchetto thingy here between Van Welly and Andraken. And by the way, the the Raptors, the points were added. So the Raptors now have 13 points. Now but... 13. All right. So that's the mark that the other teams have to try and pass. Right, which could be challenging for the Sopranos. They need to get three points to pass that. But for most of the other teams, that's not going to be too hard, particularly the New York Marshals and the Mosquitoes, David. Yeah. 
And for yeah. those um, looking at uh, the Eagles, GMC Place is pretty upset that the Eagles are in fourth place right now. But don't worry, <laughs> huh. Sleepless. As long as they get half a point, they will leapfrog over the Raptors. So let's see. I guess we should keep close eye on all the matches, really. But yeah, but especially the Amsterdam match and then Marshalls versus Eagles, because it's yeah, going to be one of those three Eagles. teams that that gets first place. And uh, yeah. Andrake and Van Welly have transformed it into another Benoni. So hooray or Benoni slash Benko, since that B bomb's just chilling on B five. Um. Azarov and Ter Sahakian have a pretty, pretty solid dry. Petrov kind of position. Although you never know how it's going to change. But yeah. right now, it's not the most uh, thrilling of the games. Right. There's there's still ways for White to try and generate an initiative in this position. So we'll see what, what Azarov comes up with. But I have high hopes for the jurabek uh, Gabrielian game. I feel like that one's going to be exciting. Very rich position. Mm -hmm. And this Carol Khan. Yeah, with a slightly unusual night on D3. Yeah. I mean, I'm feeling it for White. I do like White's position. Looks like after mm -hmm. Castles, we got a little bit more development than we usually have, right? You yeah. still need to develop all your king side and then Castle. And I like the idea of potentially getting a knight to H5. I guess you're going to start with a solid knight F6 and see if there's anything I can do with my three Tempi to punish you. Right. I mean, like, I'm even thinking about just you know, bum rushing with F4, F5, just because I have so many tempi. Mm -hmm. But I guess because of that, Jurabic played queen C7, he's thinking maybe about castling the other way because maybe he just yeah. thought castling kingside was too many tempos. But but I think that time is worth even more in, a, in opposite side castling. So actually, like to me, um, so actually to me, it's even, uh, it's even, more dangerous to castle queenside if the other person has extra time because they could just play like a4 b4 b5 and sort of control the tempo of the game in a different way than when you castle kingside indeed and arthur gabriella and played bishop to f4 but now after bishop d6 i feel like this could be actually advantageous for the marshal because after bishop takes d6 queen d6 you're trading some pieces off and maybe that will make it a little bit easier for you to consolidate right but is there a specific idea here like maybe something with knight e4 and queen g4 right i was I wondering the same tempi. yeah does he have something with queen g4 or does this just not work basically or does he play it's rookie one and threaten knight f5 does it's very sizzle or fizzle moment, David. It's like mm -hmm. we, we need to get something going or it might be nothing. And are you rooting for a sizzle or a fizzle? <laughs> well, I'm always rooting for a sizzle. <laughs> I mean, regardless of regardless of who's playing who. That would be great to have a commentator one day who is just like, yes, trade the pieces. Yes, it's a draw. It's a draw. <laughs> just, like, just like, oh, no, don't sack that piece. Don't sack that piece. Oh, this is too interesting. <laughs> Apparently, Gesberger says I make up too many plural tempo, for, <laughs> plural forms of tempo. You you use so many different ones. I was afraid to say it. I was like, either I'll get it wrong, or like it'll be like pointing out that one of the times Jen said it, she probably said it wrong because it couldn't all be right. So <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> all right, I'll just talk about time. The cool is. Tempe, <laughs> Tempini, <laughs> Tempinis. <All right. laughs> we got a, we got another one. <laughs> all right do i have time okay so knight e4 queen c7 on the board i was mentioning queen g4 f5 queen g7 looks good for me mm -hmm. so after queen g4 i'm just clicking around the match real quick to see a few other positions yeah go ahead go ahead um, Queen g4 was played by the way so we've got another karo khan between grant Chu and anna sartzian and grant Chu plays the karo khan as white himself as well I, I mean as black himself as well but here he is on the white side of it a very classic, very classic version. Not not as different as the Gabrielian one. Um, Azarov hasn't done anything yet. Oh wait, as I say, he hasn't done anything yet. He threatens made in one. So, oh, props to him on that. I think he could threaten made in one again on his next move. So with queen, with queen. Yeah. Wait, how to threaten made in one? Well, he was threatening queen h seven checkmate before black played g six. Right, so queen h3. Queen so h3 now he could go queen h3. That's what you're supposed to do is try and like get some kind of little weakness out of the opponent before they can cover it. 
So bishop on yep. e7 means there's no knight f6 or knight f8. So you might move. be forced to play the undesirable looking h5. Right. So get him to play and h5. Then the question is, is whether we can play queen f3 and just continue the circle. Right. Because you can't allow but you can't allow me to get on f7. Right. And on the rook, you just trade the rook and then it's all over. Exactly. Wow. Well, that got more interesting than it the uh, stereotype Wait, did I say of the that Petron. was not going to be interesting? Oops. No, no, you didn't <laughs> say that. We just we just didn't know yet. We just didn't know. Just yeah. Didn't. Wait, but this looks this, so after g6 queen h3, what does black do? I don't know. He's been thinking about it for a while, but I have no idea what black does. After queen h3, <laughs> it looks devastating. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, does. maybe you, I don't see a thing after but he's playing queen f3, but I have to say, David, that looks pretty good too. Very similar. Yeah, um, I mean, he was, maybe he was deciding between the two. Presumably, he was better. looking at both, and he was like, yeah. you know, They're looking both at really good, looking at everything like ninety five or whatever as resources for black. Um, so even at the to the top, the strong grandmaster level, f yeah. seven is a really weak point that you just got to defend. <laughs> and f seven like f seven is weak no matter your rating. It's just like if your rating's good, you should know how to defend it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I was trying to say. You said it more eloquently. Thank you, David. <laughs> I'm trying to say, just because you're a grandmaster doesn't mean that you can't get checkmated and embarrassed on F7. And just because you're a grandmaster doesn't mean that Bishop H2 isn't a spite check. In the old days, computers would play like Bishop H2 to delay checkmate by one move. Well, there is Queen F4. What's on, what's happening there? Oh, uh, yeah. We should have queen, queen D5. Well, yeah. Things look, things look good, but... Um, G3? Oh, is G3 our, our big eagle scan is getting sad because this game is turning into a clocking brilliancy for white. So is G3, is G3 the easiest there, David, just winning a piece? If queen to F4, is G3 easier than playing queen D5, which seems to win as well? Um, Let's see. G3. Wow. Yes, G3 looks the easiest. <laughs> Definitely. That's a solid one. On bishop F4, what would be the next move for white, though? Queen D five. Huh. Okay, that's the that's got to be the move then. That's the one that's going to be played because I guess we have to play Queen D five. Something D5, was just played and it was Bishop F four. Bishop F four, right? Yeah. So, Queen D five. There will be Bishop takes G five potentially. I mean, White can certainly play that position. Yeah. I can't shake the feeling that Queen H three would have been better than F three because it would have just. I know been because made. after after this Bishop H two Bishop F four for sure it looks a little bit less exciting. Yeah. Um. Well, yeah, can we? Me... How does Knight Knight F seven? I don't know if that really makes. No, I don't like that. that Knight F seven's <laughs> losing. In fact, after King F seven G three Rookie seven, it's all just a, exactly. why did we do this to ourselves? No. So he did play Queen takes D five, yeah. and it does. It look nice for white, but not as nice as we would like it to, right? No, no, not at all. I mean, it's still, in a sense, it looks gr great because that knight is so unsettled and the dark squares are weak. It looks like white's got plenty of chances, but we were looking at checkmates, so nothing, nothing really looks good compared to checkmate. Yeah, maybe after queen h, queen h3, the difference was that your position was more weakened because of the h5 pawn right yeah yeah i would have preferred that for sure um and on queen h3 h5 would queen f3 have allowed the same thing on h2 and f4 that's what i I'm guess saying. so that's right what I'm saying. So maybe it wasn't quite as clear as we thought because we didn't see the bishop h2 bishop f4 idea yeah but yeah. yeah. So maybe it would have turned out pretty similar to the game, actually. Well, I think there is some differences. Like maybe we maybe we would have some ideas with Knight F7 here that we didn't have before. But anyway, mm -hmm. um, you know, for yeah. another time to look. Yeah. Now, I think yeah. that some people in the chat were talking about that Knight F7 stuff as well. And so right. maybe Queen H3 was a little better. But let's move yeah. on as this game seems like it's nice for white, but not the uh, yeah. massacre that we th we were predicting before we saw this uh, this defense. Yeah. So I just want to see something for a second over here. I want to see, like, really quick what some of the individual top-scoring boards are. Now, this will be a little bit of a mess for everybody watching for one second, but Anna Sargsyan, or Sargsyan and Grant Chu are the top-scoring board fours with four and a half. Jurabek is the top-scoring board three with four and a half. Wait, I'm, like, winning Greg's $20,000.
Oh my god. Yeah, um, he, he said that he's giving away 20k instead of Oh no, of Fresnay has two and a half. He's the only one who let me down. Oh wow, there and you go. And by Kayla four and a half, so I missed by, I've got one person wrong. Oh! Oh, killing me, Greg. So it's Terra Sahakian who's the top board two so far. So it makes sense. We How's can it watch feel to lose 20k? And we can watch Van Welly. How did it How feel to it just... How does it feel to lose uh, $20,000? I don't get my hopes up until, you know, we're a little bit further into the event. <laughs> I don't even know what's the closest anyone's got. I mean, Greg can, Greg can let me know that. But... Yeah, probably Have something like 11 out of 16. Probably something like 11 out of 16 picks. Um, well, this is the kind of exciting game between Sturt and Marisa Bag. I want to draw your attention to it because okay. it looks like... White is just Whoa. um yeah down two pieces, mm -hmm. but it, it's actually not that easy for Black to defend, is it? Because no. uh, Rook G one is coming. So is there like some simple way? I mean, we to could bail out here? with Queen H five and uh, give back yeah, one Queen piece. H5. Um, but now at least White has some compensation, right? We have what yeah. three pawns? Yeah, absolutely. So I wonder if there was like a different way, or maybe if she found the best. But anyway, yeah. oh. Rook H seven. If she gets right all here. her pieces active, this might have been a good option, actually. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, d5 is hanging at the end of the variation, but does it matter if you're taking b2 and a2? Right. It might not matter. Yeah. That and might this have would been be really a nice win done. if Marisa Bag were able to get this done. Although, not yeah. not the, the standings that are of most relevant, but it will keep Marseille at least... Um, Head of God, I don't know. I oh, mean, and the she even had to, time to defend. Marcia has to have a huge score in order to pass anyone that they were, except Barcelona, which they're going to pass, obviously, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, so they, they really need a big score in this match. They do. So Van Welly so far start. has got a very good score, and he just got a pawn to b7. Um, Van Welly, when I was checking the scores, it looked like he had four out of six on board one. That's quite a nice score. And it looks like he just beat Andraken. Whoa, nice job. Fro Froyana versus Spielman looks really interesting too, David. Wow, just the mosquitoes. This is Spielman. like this is like the Banco gone wrong. The beep on just walks up the board. All right, Spielman. Ooh, baby. Yeah, I no, see it. actually Spielman looks like he's in trouble, David. I mean yeah. this attack looks devastating. Yeah. I think he's actually fair enough. Resigned. This match it's is done. wrapping up. I feel like every time well, that won. I feel like that every time Spellman's had a great game was like the one or two rounds that that something bad happened to Van Welly, and then every time that Spellman loses, Van Welly wins. Like now, this is particularly painful because the, the Stormbringers <laughs> were doing so badly. Yeah. That uh, it it doesn't even do that much for them. Okay, maybe they're gonna be able to pass the, the Sopranos. It's possible. We have to see how the rest of the round shakes out. Yeah. But one thing for sure is it's gonna damage Mosquito's chances for first. Definitely. Let's see how they're doing on the other boards. Um, let's go down their boards a little bit. We've got Froelich, who I had been, who I had up on the board a little bit earlier. He's got a weird sort of structure with this overprotected double pawn on c5. This is that new London opening theory. This kind of stuff where White takes on c5 early on and then tries to make it annoying for Black to recover. Is that is and that? Is that queen kind of trapped on uh, on c3? And there's an end game in the other game with the mosquitoes, which actually looks like it might be promising for the black. The Ivlev game? Let's see. Knight c4 just played, kind of forcing matters, and black wins. Well, yeah. That's pretty clear. It's already... It's already over, I think. Because, well... What's a... Uh... Just what are you thinking? Just king e4? Yeah. And then you're just gonna run out of tempo at some point. Yeah. You're gonna run out of tempos, tempi, all the different words for tempo Tempinis, you're gonna run out of. Tempuzos. They're all gonna be used up. <laughs> so now f five, and if f four king e four, and if g four you trade and then play g five. Yeah, unfortunate. And that's the last temp. And I'm trying to think of babushka, 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 temp, tempuka, tempuka, tempushka. <laughs> <I'll do it. laughs> I've lost all my tempushkas. 
from Butchka's. <laughs> that sounds pretty cool. Yeah. But I, yeah, this is a nice win for, for Leonard Deck, and that's going to be really tough for the teams trying to chase them. Oh, that's bad like... news for the chasers, for sure. Yeah. I mean, because the Mosquitoes did lose that one game, but they've won two games. And uh, the other, the one other more battle... tempo with A4. Why couldn't Black just take on A4? That is so weird that Black doesn't take on A4. I do not. Because that gives White another free tempo with A5. Luckily, it doesn't matter because he's just getting into E4. Luckily, though. it doesn't matter. But what was wrong with taking the pawn on A4? Hey, you didn't want to calculate anything. You didn't want to calculate anything. That's a capture. I don't look at captures. <laughs> um, okay, but let's look at the other game with, with the yeah. with the mosquitoes because actually there's not a lot of time left on that clock. Back Two and to, a half minute, back to, a minute. to Frulik. I mean, basically, if, he, if Frulik wins this as White, then it sort of doesn't matter what the Marshals and Eagles are doing, does it? I exactly, mean, exactly. They're scoring, and, like, and, and, so many points for the mosquitoes here. They've already got two out of three with one game still to go. Well, material is equal, and it looks like we should be able to try to trap that queen, but there's equal. no way to get another piece into it. How did the knight end up on c4? What was this thing? Que oh, queen. the queen was what moved from c4. Okay. So black's trying to play like e5. White's trying to trap this queen with like a queen move and knight to d1. Although queen knight d1 4. opens up the c4 square I'll never again. be able to trap this queen, yeah, with b4 and c4. There's too many squares open. Yeah, th this position looks so random. And, like, hard to coordinate. By the way, we've got plenty of Grandmasters over on the chess.com chat as well, I see. Okay. Potempo, Potempo, Potempo is another one. <laughs> Queen E2 played. I was thinking about this maybe Rook D1 to D3. Okay. That could get the job done. Black's presumably going to, like, attack something here. Yep. <laughs> Fair prediction. You're not going to sit around and let the queen fight all by herself. He's got to come up with something. I thought it would be e5, but it's knight h5. But similar, like in both cases, we're playing against that dark squared bishop, thinking that like if we if we if we can take that dark squared bishop out, then suddenly the uh, aggressive options for blacks are going up and up. Why is black e5... playing bishop takes c5? I I don't know. I think he's trying to get e5 in. I think you're right about that. And he's just okay. playing knight f4 first, and then he wants to play e5 next. Yeah. So that the bishop well, can't scurry back to e1. Well, I'm just thinking this pawn on c5 away. is kind of hanging too, right? Like, I'm not Maybe sure he was just worried about bishop, e1, bishop g3 to e1, so he wants to stop that. Uh-huh. I, I get that. I think that makes some sense. Knight e1 wasn't quite a threat because black had queen b4, which then also hits the bishop on a4 to the person asking about it. Yeah, we were wondering about these lines. They're a little bit weird and messy. And these players have 48 seconds each because, because they've only played the opening phase. Other people still have like a minute and a half left on their clocks because they've played some moves. How's Azarov doing it? It's Terra Sahakian. And as we yeah, as we've been talking, it became he's a bullet not, game. Basically. He's not been able to make use of that black king position. Wow, mm. not at all. Black is up a pawn. Down a minute. Found the time to grab the to pawn be, on c3. It but could prove to be costly. Right now, the d4 pawn taboo because of queen takes d5. <coughs> yep. And b6. The knight pretty well it's a good move i like it trade off white's last pawn on the queen side yeah, just, I like it too. just narrow idea, the board although... a little bit more with your knight make things a little simpler he's gonna try to get active with rook a1 potentially oh and sh it looks like yeah grant shu and sarg Sian must have finished their game um you won which, grant which you won. was the battle between the two people tied for first place on board four so that means grant shu is the top board four today after winning that one. And Vrolyek, uh, if, you, if you want to go back to that game, is 30 seconds to 15 yeah. seconds. With a pawn on d6, is it strength or a weakness? The Azarov game just ended in a draw. They repeated. Pawn came to d6. These guys are just blitzing now. 15 seconds. Whew. Queen c6 is the idea, but can we? Do we have time to get to protect that pawn? He's playing queen d2, so then now after queen c6, there's queen b4. That's the idea. You can't yeah. take. You could take on c2, but it looks very dangerous. On c2, but instead bring out all the pieces while that rook is still on b1. 
that's right and look at this now white's getting passive yeah and black's looking to clean up the d6 pawn he could have grabbed c2 but he prefers to clean up the one that looks scarier and, and then, now a tough defense on tap for white now a tough defense for frolic and that's what, but what the marshals and the oh. and the eagles wanted to see the marshals now 15 and a half to 15 and a half dead heat with the mosquitoes here this is the last game that the Mosquitoes can get any points, but All right. will the they? The Mosquitoes need him to salvage at least a half point here. Get us at least a half point, man. What's oh, Miranda yeah. doing? We've what got Real Boy and Miranda playing. Does that mean that... Oh, I think that I, I misspoke. Um, there was an, There is another game with the Mosquitoes going on. Leonard oh, Zach. yeah. Because we had already counted that. We as counted win. the we never... point for them, but his opponent but it... hadn't resigned yet. So they've yes, got a point yes, coming okay. in. Okay. Yeah, so they We've will got... have 16 and a half. An interesting game between Andreasian and Miranda. Can Miranda win the bishop on e1 here? Can he win the bishop on e1? It sure looks like it. That could be a huge point for the marshals. Wait, another oh game just disappeared off the list of games to be played. Miranda and wins by, Miranda resignation, by resignation. Collects the bishop. So that's 16 and a half points Ryavkin for the marshals. and Frolik. It's the only game I see still going. What I, I don't know what happened in, in Jurabek's game. But. Um Broliak Broliak is the only game still going and yeah. if he if he draws this, he will they will pass the mosquitoes. Yeah, but so we don't is... know if every game that just finished has been put in. Okay, Jurabek lost. So this is the last game. It looks like looks like a lot of losing chances for Frolic, but he got the A pawn off the board actually, so it's not so dire. But apparently the Broly can Oh, made him one, one, made him one, made him one. Oh, he's in check. He's in check. Can he? Apparently earlier he did miss the made him one. I, I heard people screaming about that did in the chat. Oh, my God. It feels like... Okay, he stopped that. I think Rook F2 was a really good move there. Oh, falls for this one instead. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. All right, he's up one pawn. But Frolic is putting up a defense. Putting up the defense. Yeah. Is he going to be able to do it? <sighs> not a lot of not a lot left on the board, so he not should be able to. Not a lot left, but knight endings are tricky, and rook pawns, the one place they're good is in knight endings. And if he trades into the king of pawn ending, here, and there, there, h -R. And he did. He offered it. He didn't. It would have been winning for black, I think. What? I think it was winning for black. He didn't have time to calculate it, so he just went for this. Yeah, but this is drawn now. This is drawn now. Oh, my goodness. Knight takes e6. There you go. Unless this piece can't get back into the game. Wait. Where is he going? Oh, yeah. White just needs to get knight his king to h1. It doesn't matter where his knight is. And there it is. And that is going to be the half point that the mosquitoes needed. Frolic in a losing position lots of possibilities for Briakin, and he hangs in there trades the pawns off one at a time and wins the battle that royale was well deserved in the final game the of mosquitoes. the round what oh a performance goodness. by the amsterdam mosquitoes and wow. what a nice job by the new york marshals as well this you can tell how tight this <sighs> division was because um, 17 points, so impressive, but not that huge of a score to get first, and that's because everybody did so well. Yeah, 17 is not a very big score for first you place. You want to scroll back to the missed mate? People want to see the checkmate that was missed. Okay. I, I'm not sure what move number it was. Can somebody tell me what move no, number? No, it would have it was probably like been a while ago, but let's see. Yeah. Was so it there before was a or after this? Checkmate mess? Huh, I... A rook b8 check. I don't see why rook b8 would have ever been. Because the rook was never on b8, so I'm I'm a little mm -hmm. confused. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, there was. They played rook b1, knight c4, king e2. Maybe he got confused because it was a check on c4. Where, where, what move is it? Jim? I think the guy might have been. Wasn't it right there? Rook d2. They said. Anyway, I'm not sure. If somebody gives us a move number, we can look at it. Yeah, but... without a move number, it's uh, yeah. a square doesn't tell us anything because the rook could have moved to d2 on like 20 different moves.
But what a great battle royale, guys. Thanks, for everybody, for watching. And I hope that you all watch tonight. Um, David's going to be streaming. Alexandra Botez and Grandmaster Robert Hess are going to be streaming on this channel. And, of course, Hikaru is going to be in the action. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm certainly going to be watching before I go to sleep as it's going to start at 10.30 here and – no, uh, 9.30 here on the Central Time. And then uh, tomorrow – we start the champion showdown here in St. Louis. So yeah. shout out to guys like Hikaru and Wesley and Fabi <clears> who are going to be playing late into the night before they play a big money match starting tomorrow. Yeah. So yeah, everybody remember to root for the mechanics tonight and, uh, you know, look for all the 2800s we have to play against to stumble somehow. <laughs> well, Root for however, whoever you want to root for. <laughs> <laughs> no, it should be Seriously, thrilling. No. So many good players to watch tonight. Um, this I, this moment I've got up on the board here, I think, is the moment where Briakin could have... I mean, one moment I noticed where Briakin could have clearly won it with Rook F2, and that would have uh, put the Marshals and Mosquitoes in a tie. Um, the Migraines had Night a good era. final round to catch the Armenia Eagles in a tie for third and fourth place. The points will be shared between them. And uh, the Marshals and Mosquitoes will haul in a lot of points. So there will be some pressure on Webster tonight to keep up with the Marshals, I think, right? Because they're only one point or so ahead of them going into the Battle Royale week. Um, so Webster would probably need to get about second place in their Battle Royale to keep up with the Marshals uh, or to stay ahead of them. That said, Webster won the last uh, Battle Royale they played in, so... Well, thanks everybody for watching and to all the mods and everybody who commented and everybody on chess.com. This battle royale has been so much fun. Um, it's been so much fun calling it with you, David. Uh, yeah, thank you, Jen. It was, it was great. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and uh, get a good little break before your next commenting. Well, I have a longer break tomorrow. than you do, David. You're yeah. commenting tonight. I'm not commenting till yeah. tomorrow. But what a golden age of chess, guys. You yeah. have so much amazing Always content something, coming huh? up. And, um, yeah, shout out to everybody viewing. I'll be back next week for more pro chess league coverage. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys.